I'm looking for a cloud, any cloud, and all I see is the Goodyear blimp. It is a beautiful day here in Phoenix. 77 degrees, 102 degrees is the track temp, and that grandstand is packed. They announced a sellout for this race uh, just a couple of hours ago. 312 miles, or 500 kilometers. 60, 125, and 127 laps are the stage lengths. They can go just shy of 100 laps on fuel. Uh, let's check in with Eric Jones, Dave Ellens, and team. Right, good luck down there, guys. Appreciate the hard work. Last few weeks, fast car this weekend. Let's make the most of it today and have a good one. Good luck. Good start for him, Kevin. Yeah, I, I think he's a sleeper in this field. We, we saw a lot of really fast times out of him in practice and very consistent times, but this story is yet to be told. As we get past lap 20, that's when we're really going to see who's got what with these cars. Nine different onboard camera views for you today. Should be a lot of action. Well, they're going to be busy right off the bat on this start. This is one of the wildest chaotic starts we have in all the NASCAR. Here they come to the green for 500 kilometers. Look at that, one car on the racetrack. All the way back at Chastain. Four wide mid pack. Whoa. A lot of cars using that apron already. Boy, Ty Gibbs got a great start. Yeah, we saw Ty Gibbs right into the, the side draft, right? He knew Denny Hamlin was going to come down the racetrack and he wanted to follow him down on the apron, but Ty Gibbs has been doing an amazing job at the end of last year and this year. You guys know him on that train. I think he's in position to, uh, you know, win a race as soon as it all comes together. So these Gibbs cars notoriously have been very good here at Phoenix, whether it's Xfinity, Cup cars, new style, old style. These guys have all uh, done really good uh, in Gibbs cars. One of the biggest challenges about this, all right, you see him fanning out, going here, there, everywhere, elbows up. Look at Denny Hamlin slipping back a couple spots. To be good on a long run, like you told me, so important, Kevin. That means the air pressures are down. That means this thing's going to be light on its feet, slipping and sliding around. It'll come in, but it'll take time. Well, it's going to be light on its feet, and a lot of times it's not going to turn very well because the, the, the front air is, is super low. You've got more traffic than you've ever had to deal with before in, in, in practice. And so that front end won't turn, and as soon as that front end grabs, the back will start to slide, and next thing you know, you're walking that thing up off the corner. Ty Gibbs, last year's Rookie of the Year. These are the first laps that he has led in this young season. We see all these cars working different lines on the racetrack, and as we go through turns one and two here throughout the day, that line is going to continue to move up. You can use the flat of the apron like we saw in the restart. You can hook the right sides on the, on the right line, but as we come down in here to turn three, you want to be right on that yellow line where Martin Truex is, hugging that yellow line all the way through the restart zone, and that is extra grip with that left front on that line like that. It sounds, Kevin, with all your success here, like you loved the fact that this is two different racetracks with, well, really five different corners. It is a very different racetrack, and really the two ends are, are very different. And, and as we come down into turn three, I always prefer to be on the very bottom, and as the race goes, that groove will move up, and you can run that third groove. Uh, but when you get to turns one and two, you just have a lot of options to be able to drive the car in straight, to arc the car into the corner. You can run the bottom of the racetrack, you can run the middle of the racetrack, or you can drive it in straight and, and go up the racetrack. But as we go through the day, you'll, you'll start to see, uh, as we see Daniel Suarez already up in that third lane. Nice to have options. Martin Truex uh, battling with Noah Gregson. This is for 10th place. Larson Suarez. Oh, oh big trouble in the back straightaway. A lot of damage to the left front of Austin Sindrick's car, and we're under the first caution of the day. This happened back about 30th place, Austin Dillon involved. Derek Kraus making his second cup start, led some uh, laps last week in Las Vegas. He's one of at least three cars. Oh, Austin Dillon again getting collected in an early accident. Been a tough go for Austin. Yeah, that, that two car of, of Cindric is done. You see that left front tire sticking straight out. That one will go to the garage and be the end of his day. All right, let's have a look at what happened here. Back at 30. You can see him sideways clearing the back of the screen. 
Krause is around, stacks them all up behind him. Sendrick clips him with the left front. Then Austin hits him. Looks like a short day for the uh, Morgan and Morgan onboard camera. Here's a look. This is a look from Austin Dillon, and you're going to see him just nowhere to go. Watch this in the smoke. Boom, run right into him. Third race this year, Austin Dillon's been caught up in a wreck within the first five laps. First caution of the day for Derek Krause's spin. NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by Progressive Insurance. Bundle home and auto and save. And by Ford, built Ford proud. Coming around to complete lap 10 under caution, a review of what happened in turn two. It appeared Derek Krause spun without contact, uh, but it involved Austin Dillon. Austin Sindrick. Yep. You're going to see Derek Krause right there. He just splits that yellow line and lose this car all by himself. And this car is hard to drive. And, and for new guys that come in or don't race all the time, it's, it's hard to know when this car is going to spin out. See Austin trying to avoid him. Boom, right there. He got into him. Probably going to see a slap on the wheel out of frustration and a head shake. See him come sliding in there. Just can't get stopped. I've had this happen to me. Just like it did to Derek, it it, it just it just um, you got to understand where these cars are gonna gonna slide and when they're gonna come around on you. But w when you're just getting used to these cars, they will just snap out from underneath you like you don't even know what happened. Well, all these teams back here, you hate to say it, but it's a product of the bed you made for yourself. A, a tough uh, qualifying session yesterday leads to that. The Cindric car is going on the hook. They tried to make repairs on pit road. Looks like they're going to tow the number two back to the garage. Kyle Busch went to the back and uh, then to the pits. And you're going to see uh, this this crewman right here is going to put that wrench in right there. He's going to do the same thing on on the other side. He's basically just been 
sounds like he's been sideways and they're just trying to get the rear of the rear of the race car in into the racetrack. Larry, can you tell us more? Yeah, what they're doing is adjusting the wedge on the left rear and the right rear. Let's go to our Toyota Camry cutaway car and let's talk about what exactly is going on because you can adjust it on the left rear, you can adjust it on the right rear, and on the back window you see these circles and that's where they put the wedge wrench in. Let's take a look right here at the back window. Now what you're doing, you're screwing down on that jack bolt and what that's doing, it's screwing down on a plunger that's inside that canister and that canister pushes the shock fluid and you can either compress the spring when you screw down or you can let the spring up when you back it out. On the right rear when you screw down you're taking wedge out. When you back off you're putting wedge in. Remember you won't wedge when the car is loose which is exactly what's been going on with that eight car. Thanks Larry. We listened in on Kyle Busch. steers the wrong way when you lift out of the gas is keeping weight off the right rear. Like when I touch the flat, it just jacks sideways. If I touch a different banking angle. All right, everybody's still on the lead lap except Austin Dillon back in the race three laps down. Now Ty Gibbs got the lead from the outside on the initial start. He takes the inside this time. Big crossover from Reddick on the bottom. Came from the outside looking under. But Eric Jones holding strong on that outside. Yeah, the hard part about that apron, as you see Tyler Reddick down on the bottom, it's just hard to get the car to rotate and get up off the corner in the throttle. Those guys on the outside in the groove have that momentum to go back by you. Four Toyotas leading Chase Elliott and William Byron in Chevrolets. Danny's car's still a little bit sluggish taking off. That's, that's telling me that's probably a good sign for a I was going to just say, I don't know that that's the worst thing in the world because we saw a lot of guys fire off. Tyler Reddick was one of them yesterday or, or Friday that would fire off really good for about the first 10 or 15 laps. And I think as this goes, I think the cars may fall off more than these guys think they need to. And any of the cars that are handling just a, a little bit better are going to be able to make passes and, and go forward and maintain their lap times better. Well, the one thing I definitely want to do if they have good early takeoff speed, that fire off speed you talk about, Kevin, is make sure I get the job done. Make sure I get it as far forward as I can to get in that clean air situation. That's going to help me. For sure. Not this. Three wide. No. no. <laughs> We're not used to seeing that 22 car back there in the middle of the pack like this at the beginning of the race. Typically, Joey Logano with his Hunt Brothers Pizza onboard camera, um, you know, typically they qualify good, but. They are in the middle of the storm back there in the pack. Hear him downshift. You'll downshift into, into turn one after you go from fifth gear to fourth gear. Uh, I would say with the pace that they're running today, you're probably going to just carry fourth gear all the way down the back stretch into, into turn three. Seventh place here, Michael McDowell and Carson Hosevar uh, holding well after starting 10th. He's eighth. And we referred to him as a gasser. He, he is a guy, Carson Hosfar is a guy that's going to put the gas pedal down and be aggressive with everything. See him three wide all the way through the corner here. Got Ryan Blaney on the bottom, Kyle Larson in the middle, and Noah Gregson on the top. Nemechek Suarez looking in. And right behind them, Keslowski. And that 20 car, keep an eye on Christopher Bell today. If we get to run about 15 consecutive green flag laps, watch for Bell to move toward the front. Well, we thought we he had the best car in practice, but the, the bad thing for Christopher Bell was he was the best car in practice. And, and today, <laughs> uh, these guys have all had two days to talk about their cars and work on their cars and make them better from, from where they were in practice. Mindful of the test that happened, right? New package with this thing. Several cars were here to test. 20, Christopher Bell is one of them. 5, 7, 43, 17, and Blaney in that 12 car. Those guys have more laps and experience on this place in this situation. Going into turn three, Kyle Larson gave Noah Gregson a shot going into turn number three. Just a little one, just enough to move him up out of the groove so Larson could get track position to the inside and try to complete this pass. Well, well I've been he, watching this for about three or four laps door to door. That's frustration setting in. Time yeah. to go. Get out he, of the way, boy. He is definitely frustrated, and, and Noah doesn't want to let him go. He knows how important the track position is, and he qualified well, wants to keep his car up in the front, and Kyle Larson's like, hey, man, cut me some slack. He's uh, seen driving it in hard again on that outside. 
and the cut the slack piece of it is is gone in in this in, in this day and age of racing it's take everything that you can get keep the track position make it as difficult on that guy as possible behind you beside you around you whatever you have to do to keep him back there because it's going to be twice as hard to get that place back what you said about track position is what drives that the urgency you cannot give that spot up because he used to be able to give it but i remember my first time at martinsville tony stewart i blew his doors off boy i put a half a track on him i was like ha he ain't that bad 30 laps later i was a lap down he was lapping me Ryan Blaney from the Ford Performance on board. Looking back there at Martin Truex. Here's your Xfinity fastest lap, and as expected, Ty Gibbs, uh, with the nose of that car in the wind, has the fastest lap of the race so far. Tyler Reddick right there. Jones, Hamlin, a lot of Toyotas on that list. Regan. Well, Mike, one of the most important parts of the day is the pre-race team meeting for these crews to know what to expect today. Earlier, Chris Gabehart, Denny Hamlin's crew chief, let us sit on his, sit in on his. Huge opportunity for us. Phoenix is a big one. Right sides aren't likely, but they're possible. Uh, most likely four tires all day. Nice, clean execution on a day like today. Don't make any mistakes. Keep it in their hands. Butt ball out. Today is the day we get to go. I feel really good about it. One, two, three, thank you. Probably four tire changes. They have eight sets of tires, plus the carryover tires that they qualified on for a total of nine sets available. Remember, the race is only 312 miles. Well, are they important? I can tell you this. Look over. Kyle Busch, biggest mover. Dead last, put those tires on. He's up 11 spots, running 20th. I'd say they make a difference, Kevin. They definitely make a difference. And I listened to Chris Gabart, and, and he's he's uh, he's one of those crew chiefs that just he's got that dog in him, Clint. And he's just in there <laughs> digging all the time. I'd say there it is, folks. There's your words. We're halfway in stage one of the Shriners Children's 500 at Phoenix. 
You're watching our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, powering the race from green to checkered flag and every mile in between. Goodyear, more driven. Ty Gibbs has led every one of 30 laps so far, but Eric Jones closing in from second place. Jamie. And what a great weekend it's been for this 43 team and Eric Jones from the get-go in qualifying. They qualified fourth. That was his best effort ever here at Phoenix, his best on the year. I talked to his crew chief, Dave Ellens, and he said there was one major contributor. We got to come here and test. He said we got a 54-lap run, and that gave us a great indication of where this car is going to go on the long run. On Friday, the most laps any of these teams got was 20. So it's paying off so far. Pretty happy in there. Wants to tighten them up on this first round of stops. Jones holding at seven tenths of a second back of Ty Gibbs. It's an all Toyota front four with pole sitter Hamlin in third and Tyler Reddick fourth. Yeah, they're really not getting away from one another either. Pretty equally matched that once through four. But I've been keeping my eye on you see Chase Elliott on a pylon in fifth and his teammate William Byron at 24. Boys are starting to lay some laps down. I don't think old Hendrick Motorsports is done giving this thing away to somebody else yet. Let's get an update on the leader, Bregan. Well, Mike, it's been smooth sailing up front so far for the 54 at Ty Gibbs, but a couple laps ago just reported to his team. It feels like his brakes are getting hotter and hotter as he goes right now. Keep in mind, his teammate Christopher Bell had a brake failure in the championship race last fall here. Something to keep an eye on as we go. Well, here's one thing I'll bring up, and we talked about this at the clash, and that was that brake split where you'd have the a uh, different pad in the right front and left front and you get that huge glow in the right front and builds a lot of temperature and we do that here because it keeps the car straighter in the corner under braking and doesn't allow the back to slide out as you're hitting the brake pedal which they will do as the tires wear so this is really the part of the race where we start to see who's got the long run car who's got um, you know the, the brakes uh, that are getting hot and all the different things that are happening so there's a lot to play out over these next uh, 26 laps at the end of the stage. Let me add one more layer to that brake scenario when I'm loose here at Phoenix Raceway I'm using more brake I'm trying to keep the car underneath of me that's the only thing the only tool I have in my toolbox to keep this thing in straight and underneath of me you told me the brakes are staggered they're set up for that very scenario so I'm going to use a lot of brake in it. Yeah, that's one thing about this Gen 7 car. The brake package on all cars are the same. You can't deviate with calipers and rotors and things of that nature. But to your point, Kevin, what they'll do, they'll put a softer pad, a grippier pad in the right front, which makes you start overworking the right front to get the left front to stop. We saw it at Loudon last year. We saw it at St. Louis. Anywhere we have long straightaways and flat corners, the cooling just can't keep up with it. Thanks, Larry. Austin Sendrick, only car out of the race. He has been checked and released at the infield care center. Four Toyotas leading the Chevrolet of Chase Elliott, while the first Ford in the race is Michael McDowell uh, in seventh. We well, heard me talk about it. Denny Hamlin squir in a little bit uh, um, loose taken off. Well, his car's coming to him. He's starting to move around, catching Eric Jones in front of him with Reddick in tow, doing the exact same thing, starting to feel things out in three and four moving up. You see him moving around in one and two as well. Well, you've got to be versatile here because you can't go in the corner directly behind the car in front of you. And that's just across the board and racing all over the world. That, I mean, you've got to be able to put your car in a different spot compared to the guy in front of you unless you have a drastically better handling race car. And in one and two and three and four, both of them, as you see Tyler Reddick run up the racetrack right there, both ends of the racetracks have options. And you've got to be able to use different lanes in order to make ground. What I'm seeing right now is those two Chevrolets beginning to make inroads on the four Toyotas out front. They're gaining ground. There's uh, Blaney, ninth, second among the Fords, just in front of Chase Briscoe. And he's going to get past Carson Hosevar here. He's top four, really picking up. I love the way this track widens out. The options that you talk about, Kevin, it's put on full display with these guys moving around, go with or not. And it's going to change as as the day goes on and the shadows change and the, the temperature outside is going to keep going up. And, and as that ambient temperature goes up, the track temperature will go up with it. And so this this the target's going to move a little bit today as as you as you get that temperature change and where you want to be on the racetrack and, and what your car is doing. So Denny Hamlin has been on the top of the racetrack down here in three and four. And now he's back on the bottom of the racetrack. He's going to go wherever Eric Jones is not going. So if he's if he goes to the bottom in this corner, he's going to go high. Uh, and try to stay out of that wake. 
All right, put me in Eric Jones's car. What am I going to do? He's starting to catch me. I'm going to follow suit. I'm going to listen to my spot, and we're going to work together to try to make him arrow tight behind me. If he moves up, I need to crowd that area a little bit. If he moves bottom, try to arrow block him. And you're also going to try the, the line that you see in your mirror, and your spotter's telling you that, hey, I need to move up and, and try that as well to, to see if that will wake my car up to something better. 19 laps to go in the first of three stages. Ty Gibbs has been out front for all 41 so far. NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by Bush Light. Race for the mountains. Enjoy responsibly. And by Credit One Bank. 47 laps complete. Ty Gibbs held off the charge from Eric Jones. Uh, Jeff Gordon was involved in that uh, Clint Boyer run, I believe. <laughs> yeah. There he is. Yeah, he was. I miss old Jeff. Called and told me he was coming in late last night and give me a chance to hang out with him, but. A lot of fun at these racetracks, a lot of experience sitting there on top of Chase Elliott's box. All right, now Tyler Reddick has moved past Eric Jones for second, and Denny Hamlin has now taken third. 12 to go in stage one, Larry. Let's have a look at the race strategy, sponsored by Liberty Mutual. Yeah, Mike, remember the fuel window is about 95 laps. Depending on how cautions fall, you should not have to stop in this first stage. But in second stage and the third stage, split the stage in half. Now, if we do get a late race caution, say 15 or less laps to go, think about right side tires only. This move won the race for William Byron one year ago. And you know what? This is so true at Phoenix. Don't beat yourself. Both Phoenix races last year and the first three races of this year, pit road penalties and mistakes has ruined a lot of drivers' good days. Mike, last year, the two races here at Phoenix combined, 17 pit road speeding penalties. Yeah, that curve around uh, turns three and four on pit lane has been troublesome. Uh, here's Reddick looking for the lead. 
You see how hard it is to pass even the leader out here for Reddick really come on strong. He was good on these long runs in the fall race. That's why that pit road is so important. Hard to come by on this racetrack. Toyota's for the front spot Chevy's for fifth on the right of your screen. Elliott and Byron. Well, and this is when it becomes tricky. You have that lap car of Austin Dillon up there that Ty Gibbs has to has to navigate and run in his line and he's got to move around. So what's well, tricky for him, but it's also an opportunity for Reddick. That's right. You time it and pounce on it right. Look at him crossover move right here. Can I get door to door with him? Might see the pass for the lead right here using that opportunity of Austin Dillon looking to the bottom. This is where I think Tyler Reddick's car right here. He's got that option of that middle lane and typically that's not a lane that. I would prefer um, but he's making it work and, and able to run one lane up instead of having to run three lanes up. But I think as the day goes in three and four he's going to there's going to be a lot of cars that move further and further up the racetrack. Well Tyler Reddick's wanting to be on that outside. He's moved up and took that line away from you pass me. You're going to have to do it on the bottom. Well, I can also pinch your exit off down there. He's making it work OK on on off the exit of turn two. He's he's good through the, the center of the corner on the bottom. He just can't quite carry that momentum and Ty Gibbs doing a good job moving around takes that exit away from him. Six to go in the stage Ty Gibbs trying to hang on and score the stage win here Tyler Reddick trying to take it away. Well that that stage in pays ten points um, and it also gives you one playoff point playoffs so you want to you want to take all those points that you can get whether you can get them for the, the race uh, today or for the playoffs in the long run. Denny Hamlin Eric Jones being brought back to the leaders and bringing Chase Elliott with them. Really taking that line away from him. You see it again right there. If he could ever get to his right rear, he'd have him passed. Well, and he went all the way down the racetrack, basically just trying to look in his mirror and, and stay in front of Tyler Reddick because I think right now that's his best defense. Because if Tyler Reddick gets around him, he's going to drive away. Well, he gave him that outside finally. Look at him looking in the mirror. Still clear. Good corner right there for Ty Gibbs. Up to fifth gear, back down to front, uh, fourth for turn one. Reddick again to the bottom trying to draw even way on the apron there door to door drag the race. It'll be three to go in the stage this time. Reddick sends it in on the inside edge is ahead and he's going to lead hit maybe lead his first lap of the day. <laughs> maybe <laughs> he just barely missed that left front on the yellow line down there and when you miss that yellow line you just have to wait on the front to turn just a little bit longer but. This seems to be his better end and because he's got the option to drive down on the apron on the exit but he's got him cleared this time. Tyler Reddick to the lead. Great work Tyler Reddick exactly what I saw in that fall race. This car was bad fast on the backside of these runs. Nobody runs that outside line and can make that work better than Tyler Reddick. Well it's not just that outside line it's it's that he just. He moves around right he can run the outside line and then he'll pull it back down and, and he just is willing to experiment and move around more than it seems the other guys are but that's kind of that dirt background. That's exactly what I was going to say that's a dirt background. Move around figure out another way around it. Dirt tracks change every lap. Prior to today Toyota's had only led 15 laps at Phoenix with this seventh generation NASCAR race car. Big difference today. It's going to be a busy pit road as soon as this caution comes out. But man, he is pulling away. He likes what he feels so far. And his crew chief on the box, he's liking them lap times. We're going to finish stage one with 34 cars on the lead lap. Austin Dillon multiple laps down and Austin Sindrick out of the race on a lap six crash. For Tyler Reddick, his first stage win of the season and his first at Phoenix. There are the drivers who have scored stage points. After these first 60 laps, Tyler Reddick, your leader.
In just three weeks, pro football is back. The UFL kicks off Saturday, March 30th. USFL champ Birmingham taking on XFL champ Arlington on Fox. Kickoff weekend then continues Sunday, March 31st on ESPN. End of stage one. Four Toyotas out front, Reddick, Gibbs, Hamlin, Jones, then the Chevys of Elliott and Byron, and the Fords of Blaney, McDowell, and Briscoe. Jamie? Well, Mike, Christopher Bell got a new pit crew at the start of the playoffs last season. Those guys helped make it to the championship four right here in Phoenix, and that change was made permanent. So now let's say hello to Team 20. Blake Houston, front tire changer, former baseball player at Catawba College, 2023 Pit Crew Challenge winner. Michael Hicks, rear tire changer, the crew chief from my nine-year-old little girl go-kart racing, 50 career-plus cup wins, three-time Pit Crew competition champion. Jake Holmes on the tire care from Westboro, Massachusetts, former college running back, former Coke 600 winner, and I'm the current Pit Crew Challenge champion. Darrell Edwards, Baltimore, Maryland, Jack Mann, former High Point University shooting guard, 2018 Daytona 500 champion, 2019 Xfinity Series champion, and last but not least, Cameras Dad Dad. Peyton Moore, Fueller, former all-conference linebacker at the KSU. Did you see the neck on that boy? Oh my goodness. <laughs> I am not messing with that crew. And they are ready to go to work. Shooting guard to Jackman. I want to hear that story. Well, the story is we have a lot of athletes on pit road, and I hope you as bet. we go through the year that people realize the amount of athletes and what it takes to pit these race cars is just really over the top in the, in the time and effort that they put into it. And Westboro, Mass, there used to be a great little quarter mile speedway there, just west of Boston. Really? Past Framingham, yep. They're ready. On the ready. Tricky pit road, Clint. Very tricky. And a busy one. 34 cars on the lead lap, all eligible to pit this time. There's the free pass car, Austin Dillon, going out and around. First test for these pit crews today. Jamie? Eric Jones been solid so far, and the 43 comes in in fourth spot, lacking lateral grip overall as he runs. Stayed pretty good on the fire off the nine of Chase Elliott. Said he gets squishy free on the left rear. Wants to tighten it up just a bit for the start of the run, but pretty happy. Pretty good. Tyler Reddick in the 45, happy with the balance of his car. A little tight at times, a little loose at times. Wants to keep up with the racetrack in the 54. A Ty Gibbs gets tight in the center, meaning the front won't turn. That causes the back to get loose on the exit. All right, here comes Reddick. He's going to beat Ty Gibbs. There goes Hamlin. Hamlin from pit box number one will get the lead. Well, that's what we talked about at the start of the race. I mean, that pit box one here is the most advantageous pit stall that we go to on the whole circuit. So that was a huge move for, for Denny Hamlin to get the pole today. Eric Jones lost six spots on pit road. That's what they're discussing. Ty Gibbs down three.
time to get ready for the Big East Tournament on Fox and FS1 and see who rises up in the world's most famous arena to take the conference crown. It all tips off Wednesday on Fox and FS1. Always fun to be out here in Phoenix area during this time. You got spring training going on, obviously our NASCAR, and then those tournaments. You see, boy, them people are in they're rowdy kind of shape, Kevin, when they get back from them baseball games and then they watch basketball. It's a lot of fun down there. That's that Scottsdale place I was telling you about. We're trying to stay away from this weekend. You didn't stay away. I did. You, I did. you did stay away. Kyle Larson uh, made a second stop. Larry, what were they doing? Yeah, Mike, what they did, they, it's almost like they took a chaser and ran it on the threads that that single wheel locker, that single lug nut goes on. So I don't know if they were having trouble getting the lug nut off or putting it on, but it's like he took a chaser and just cleaned the threads up. So he will restart 33rd. Carson Hosevar had a loose wheel. He had to come back in. He's 34th. Regan? Yeah, Mike, they actually feel like it was an issue with the actual wheel itself. They're going to swap the wheel out on this particular tire, so not exactly positive what the issue with the wheel was, but something in that area. Ready for the restart. Hamlin, who was first off pit road, having that first pit stall, the most valuable pit stall in all of the Cup Series. Any track? Sure is. Well, it's going to get wild. Four or five wide. You got to protect yourself. You got to try to make up spots. But well, now they all know what they have for race cars and grip levels. All right, green flag. You're about to see why this grandstand is packed. Look at this. Man, three, four wide, four rows deep. Look at this, three wide getting down here. This is the corner that gets really tight. See Eric Jones in there trying to dig himself back out of that hole. Got a fast hot rod, struggled on pit road. Well, we see those two Chevrolets have, have made their way, way in, in between the Toyotas, and we see Brad Kozlowski and Ryan Blaney in those Fords, so Ooh, contact are starting to get mixed up. Eric Jones had a bit of contact there with Chase Briscoe coming up off turn number two, trying to occupy the same spot. I heard you say his name, Brad, Bad Brad Keselowski. He is definitely a benefactor of that pit stop right there. Yeah, his crew did a great job. We saw a couple crews not so great. Got to be, got to be good on pit road everywhere, but man, here it is ultra important to keep that track position. Keselowski restarted seventh. That's where he is. Ty Gibbs has been right on the bottom. But William Byron takes advantage around the outside to try to take over fourth place. See the Ford performance cam here from from Ryan Blaney. Jamie, what happened to Eric Jones on that pit stop? Yeah, he came in fourth and went out ninth. They had an engagement issue on the left front. The team is looking at it right now. The front changer, John Rosselli, said he wanted to watch and see what happened. Here's the pit stop. Watch the left front. They go on, and it's almost a double clutch. I'm not sure if this is something like what you saw last week in Las Vegas. You see it right there. Takes that extra couple few seconds, and that was five spots is the difference there on the exit of pit road. Wow. It's just a small margin of error with the, the single lug nut and everything that happens on the pit stop. It's a you know nine it's nine seconds and something that is as simple as having to go back for that nut a couple times makes it look like an eternity. Yeah. And well, it feels that it's way. It's a too. nine second stop. If it's a 10 second stop it's eternity. I mean it's one second difference makes a huge difference. Well look at the difference here between Denny Hamlin and Tyler Reddick stops. Hamlin was three tenths faster coming in. The pit crew was a second and a half faster, and Hamlin was more than a second quicker in total. Well, a lot of that Hamlin on the Hamlin side, the driver's side, is just the distance. When he leaves that box, he don't have to travel far. Oh. Truex Gregson, this is for eighth. Watch this, Bubba Wallace coming up the racetrack, gets in the side of Chastain. Chastain scrubs the wall just a little bit. Yeah, and Those Ross guys are too aggressive race car drivers. Well, I think I think um, I think Bubba thought he was going to come up the racetrack a little bit, and Ross was kind of 
square in the exit of that corner off and they just kind of met met in the middle. When you cut the dog leg that shortens up the front straightaway effectively but what does it do as you approach turn one. Well, what it does is it hurts my back. <laughs> yeah. Okay. First of all, how That's far? Really, all right, 50 feet less time traveled, yeah, so right? Basically, if you cut to the bottom of the racetrack through the dog leg right here, it's 50 feet shorter into turn one. But as you get to turn one, you have to have the car pointed straight so you get the right angle into the corner. But every time they hit that dog leg and they hit that that flat part of the racetrack, it just makes me think about having to go to the chiropractor. <laughs> 77 laps complete. Pole sitter Denny Hamlin in command in Phoenix. Eighty four laps complete south and west of downtown Phoenix sellout crowd at Phoenix Raceway for this fourth event of the NASCAR Cup season. Danny Hamlin has now been out in front for 20 laps. Tyler Reddick led for seven and Ty Gibbs from the start of the race led for 57 in the early going here. There is the dog leg you saw that makes this track just so unique. When Phoenix Raceway was built in the 1960s there was an outfield road course. Uh, you exited the track at the present turn four and you came back in at the dog leg. So it was a combined road course and oval and that transition to the outfield road course is what gives this track its unique shape that it retains today. It's by far the biggest dog leg we have. I mean it's pretty aggressive. You can see it right there in that aerial. I remember when they put that dog leg in I was like what in the hell are they doing. <laughs> I was. I think I said the exact same thing. 
works, but though. It makes it, these restarts really impressive. It makes the restarts impressive, but it also, they have created the stadium feel here at Phoenix so that you can uh, be right in the middle of things at the start finish line. They've got a fan zone down off of pit road. They've got everything that you can imagine from it. So from a fan standpoint, it's really fun to watch. Created a cool tailgate experience on that back straightaway. It used to be start finish line. We've been talking about Chase Elliott this year, but not in a good way. He's had kind of a lackluster start to the season, but boy, something has brought that number nine alive here this weekend. In his comments, he was a little dismissive. He said, well, the tire construction difference, I don't really feel it. The change in the setup, oh, I don't know, the car's a little tougher to drive. He kind of sounded like his dad. Bill used to often say, we'll just have to wait and see. Well, what we're seeing is Chase Elliott being the strongest of the Chevrolets today. Yeah, and he's probably a little bit grumpy just from having to answer all those questions. And I think today is is just it's just one of those days that they need. They need a good solid day from from start to finish. He had all the trouble last year um, and they just they just need to have a good solid day. Now Kyle Larson currently in 20th place. Uh, let's get an update from Regan. Well, Mike, we saw the issues on the pit stop for Kyle Larson, and I can tell you, no real answers down here as to what took place. The pit coach for Hendrick just told me it's something he's never seen before. They could not get the wheel to tighten up onto the left rear of the car as they did it. Chad Knauss has been down here checking things out. Cliff Daniels down here going over everything with his team. A head scratcher. Not exactly sure if this is going to be something they're going to fight the rest of the day or not. Well, I heard Larry say that they had a thread chaser on there. Does that mean the threads are stripped out on that thing? That's a good possibility. There's so many things that happen with the lug nuts and the pit stops and the, you know the gun has so much power. You've got the detents and the, there's just a lot of things going on. That's Chad Knauss. So. Well, I can tell you whoever's on the other side of that text message right there. He might have an answer. Well here's one of his cars moving forward. William Byron uh, this time to the inside of Ty Gibbs. They've had quite a battle going here uh, since the restart. Well William Byron as we've documented so many times has just been so solid um, you know through through last year and everything that he did and the car that's creeping in behind him yes, is sir. that, that uh, Bass Pro Shops car of Martin Truex Jr. Up seven spots from where he started this biggest mover Martin Truex Jr. And this is Martin's kind of race just really methodical long run stuff put the car where it where it needs to go and, and just you know go through the motions of of being solid throughout the whole day and moving around the racetrack and finding that spot that, that works for you. And, and Martin, you see him just find the open space right there in between those two cars, put as much air as possible on the front of it. When I thought about changes that are coming into this racetrack, right, we have a, a aero balance change. A lot of these things you think experience. Heard me say that in Denny Hamlin. He's leading the race. Teammate Martin Trex Jr., a lot of experience as well. Jamie? Well, you guys were talking about Chase Elliott, and I asked his crew chief, Alan Gustafson, this morning about where Chase is mentally. He said, you have to go back to when this new car came out, trying to figure it out. Then last year, he breaks his leg at the start of the season. Some other issues happen as well, and it hurt his confidence, and that's what they've been dealing with. He said, but slowly, he's getting back to the old Chase. The first three races of this season, he feels like they've really run better than they finished, but they've got to get that first top ten of this season, and it just builds the confidence in Chase and makes him better. Well, today could well be that day. Coming around to complete lap 95 of 312 today, Denny Hamlin out in front now for 31 laps total.
NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by Verizon Frontline, built for 5G, built for first responders, and by Wendy's Classic Hamburgers. Closing in on one third distance in Phoenix, are your recent cup champions decided here in the Arizona desert in the season's final race. Denny Hamlin hoping to join that group. You know we talked at the top of the show about how the last seven races here have had seven different winners. Denny Hamlin not yet among them. He could run that string to eight today. Well, I think they know if they're going to win a championship they had to get better here. Uh, we see all those pictures of championship trophies being held up and, and Denny's not one of them and uh, you're going to have to be able to win at this particular racetrack in order to win the championship and you know you heard Denny talk about him and his crew chief putting some emphasis on this race to be able to do that. Let's have a look at today's lap leaders sponsored by Schreiner's Children's. Ty Gibbs the most. Danny Hamlin closing in on that number and Tyler Reddick's been out front for seven. Christopher Bell coming into the picture as we discussed you get a long green flag run that's where that car was really stellar yesterday or Friday in practice. Yeah Christopher Bell was definitely one of the cars that, that we thought had the best car um, in, in practice and didn't qualify as well as, as some of his teammates and it makes it a little difficult to get to the front and just takes a little bit of time but those guys have been able to make a change on their car work their way towards the front and just pick them off one by one. From the Monster Energy cam of Ty Gibbs looking ahead at Bell who restarted 11th and is now 6th. Eric Jones uh, lost a bunch of spots in the pits as Jamie documented trying to work his way uh, back up but he's going the wrong direction restarted 8th currently 11th. I know you know Corelli, but let's not with this one either. Get a plan and get by him. Remember, we'll build long speed here, and then obviously we got the air. When we get there, we ain't playing. We're going. What he's saying is don't mess with those guys. Get them elbows up. Move them. We need to go. We need to catch up on this track position. But look at the difference. Look at the difference the clean air made in this car in particular. He gets mired back there in traffic, and he's actually lost ground. Well, and that's what they're talking about. You have when you have the chance and you're right next to somebody, you got to figure it out. You got to go in a different line. You got to drive it in the corner further. If you're side by side, you got to be aggressive when you have the opportunity to make those passes. Well, all right, crew chief. Quit losing spots on pit road then. Yeah. I'll handle it out here. You do your job in there. I would agree with you on that. <laughs> Long green flag run here. When we come back, we'll check with Larry and see when we can expect green flag pit stops for the first time today.
Watching Denny Hamlin lead from our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Powering every lap, every mile, and every victory on the road ahead. Goodyear, more driven. Hamlin has a 1.2 second lead on Tyler Reddick. So Larry Mack, when might we expect green flag stops? Yeah, Mike, we went back racing at lap 69, which is 116 laps to go in this stage. If you split that right down the middle, that's 58 laps run. But what we've been seeing this year when they've been splitting stages is drivers coming a little earlier than halfway. I'm going to say in the next eight to 10 laps, you're going to see green flag pit stops. Remember, like Las Vegas, once one car comes, you can't be far behind because you're going to give up so much time. Well, I think one of those cars that'll be coming will be these guys fixing to go a lap down. Think big names, Kyle Busch, some of those guys are going to be looking to do something different. Kevin, what's the biggest challenge of this pit road for a driver? Well, this pit road has a huge curve at the end of it here, and you have to go, you have to go straight uh, coming into the pits, but as you get into this corner on pit road, you have to bump the speed up uh, almost two miles an hour to be able to, to get the pit road speed where it needs to be set because of the way that it's measured in the corner. You can go faster there. Ryan Blaney on pit road. Four tires there. So this is going to start that cycle like like Clint was talking about. Once somebody pits now you're going to lose over a second a lap if you don't pit and we're seeing a whole bunch of cars start to come to pit road. So Blaney pitted from eighth. Here is Kyle Larson uh, who is back just barely at the top 20. Byron Truex, here's some of your front runners. Jamie? Martin Truex Jr. had a bit of a slow stop the first time around. He wants the rear end to rotate just a little bit, just too tight, which is what they're pretty much all saying, Regan. William Byron in the 24 car is just too tight to fire off. Needs to be a little bit looser with the back of his car, especially when he's following cars. Needs help with the nose. Jamie. Chase Elliott turning some of the fastest laps, lap after lap, saying the car fired off with better speed that time around. Not doing what he wants on entry, so they'll free him up. Maybe just a tick with air pressure on that as the team goes to work. Four tires, and they'll fill him up here. We'll note that Kyle Larson made a four-tire change that was incident-free. No, no further problems on that left rear. You see Denny Hamlin, your leader, still on that racetrack. Well, Denny Hamlin had a gap, and See Ty Gibbs on pit road here. Have a lot of trouble on the right rear, Clint. Regan? 45 of Tyler Reddick, one of the few drivers on my end of pit road I can hear saying that his balance is good. The team reminded him not to slide too far through the pit box. He did that on the first stop. Here comes Hamlin at lap 118. Suarez completing his stop. As Reddick leaves. As you see Denny Hamlin go through the corner right there, you want to stay above those dotted, those dashed lines right there to make sure your pit road speed is accelerated to where it needs to, and then you have to slow back down right here. But Denny, he's going to have a little trouble. Oh, with he had trouble Suarez. getting in. Suarez yep. moves up. That's going to cost him some time. Regan. Danny Hamlin always very descriptive about what his car is doing. Loose in at both ends of the racetrack. He likes to center and the exit is too loose. Todd Gilliland is the race leader. He has not pitted nor has uh, Kyle Busch, Ricky Stenhouse just in. Hosevar and Kraus on a lap by themselves. Gilliland a great outing at Atlanta led a career high number of laps and uh, Kyle Busch has been outside the top 20 all day good time for a gamble I'd say. Well Tyler definitely caught him a little bit you saw that mishap getting into his pit stall narrowed the gap up probably a little bit of that uh, stopping early and the rest of it was the trouble that he had on the pit stop but uh, did not get the job done and pass him but definitely caught him. Well Denny Hamlin had trouble coming right out of the pits behind Josh Berry in a four car and Tyler Reddick pitted a couple laps before him so he lost definitely lost some time. Denny had to wait for 99 and and really this is what it's all about. It's all about time. How can I make the least amount of mistakes and when I get back on the racetrack hopefully you come back out in a clear spot and you can run those first laps and gain the most speed that you can by running the best lap times. And Reddick gained six tenths of a second on Denny Hamlin during the, their green flag pit stops and back out on track. So Larry Gilliland, Bush, Stenhouse, Hosevar, Kraus. How long can they run? 
Yeah, I mean, on fuel, Mike, they can probably run another 40 laps up to north of lap 160. Now they're going to be giving up so much time. But if we run enough laps and the caution comes out, they'll pit and everybody come back to pit road behind them and get four tires. It's not like the people that's just pitted will just stay out. Well, they were on the brink of going a lap down anyway. I think they're trying to give, well, give they're luck just, a chance to operate here. Yeah, their, their cars just aren't very good today, and, and they're hoping that they can turn it down around with a little bit of luck with some strategy and everything that's happening. So you never know. And, and sometimes this will turn your day around if you can catch the caution, caution flag at the right time. Kyle Busch to pit road. Remember, he has three new pit crew members this week among his over the wall crew. They changed both tire changers and the jack man uh, promoting uh, three from the Xfinity series that still uses the five lug nut wheel that we've had forever in NASCAR. Uh, they've been promoted up to the Cup Series and they're servicing this car today. Well, Kyle Busch's team is frustrated and that's that's why they're probably aggressive with those changes because they had a car capable of winning a race. But this is going to be this is going to be the race for the lead between the 45 and the 11 right here. Got held up behind Josevar Reddick yet on that bottom. Heads up move by Denny Hamlin. He gave him the bottom, but he knew that lap was down there. The other thing that's happened right pick. here, the other thing that's happened right here, Clint, is I think the 45 has fired off better than the 11 this time, which that's been the opposite as we've gone through the first couple sets of tires. Probably need an air pressure adjustment with that car. Need to take off better, boys. So Hamlin now to second, Reddick to third. Still four seconds back of race leader Todd Gilliland. So that leaves four drivers that have not pitted. Gilliland, the leader, Stenhouse and Hosevar, fourth and fifth, and Derek Krause now tenth. Well, Denny Hamlin, with all that trouble that he had, I know he gave up some of that gap, but these guys have established themselves as, I think, the best two cars. Maybe we'll see somebody else creep back up in there. Christopher Bell's making some time and, and making his way back through the through the pack from bad qualifying and, and has picked them off one by one. But I think he's really probably the only one that can probably put himself in position with those front two right now. Bell and Elliott this is for seven. Regan. Well, Mike trouble for the 54 of Ty Gibbs on that pit sequence right there lost a number of spots. They were slow with the rear had to go back and recheck one of the rear tires on it. And that will leave him in 15th after the green flag stop. Oh let that tire yep. down didn't have the right rear wheel on it. Saw that change of look up. Hey man. Costly mistake right there. Fundamentals boys. Well it's Don't good that yourselves. it's good that they jacked that car back up and, and just took the time to fix it because the last thing we need are tires flying around and having something happen like we saw last week at Las Vegas and we've seen so many times there's just it's so hard to explain how intense the, the pit stops are because of the, the amount of time that they're on pit road. Nine seconds to a 10 second stop is it seems like a catastrophe once you come back out on the racetrack so these teams push it. And sometimes they recognize the, the mistakes that they made like they did right there and fix the problem. So Hamlin and Reddick on your screen they've now closed to within one and a quarter seconds of Todd Gilliland. There's Todd who has not yet made his green flag stop. He was last in the pits lap 65 at the end of stage one. Todd Gillen had a great first couple of weeks of the season had some trouble last week in, in practice and um, cars not quite where it needs to be today so they're just trying the strategy. Well his strategy is about up. <laughs> well four races in and already front row motorsports uh, Gilliland and McDowell have led more laps than front row has ever led in a season before. Man this battle for the lead between Reddick and Hamlin is fantastic. Hamlin searching around looking for grip on this racetrack. Been low, been high. Reddick just hounding on him. Yeah, it's not not quite the lead yet, but they're they're right there with the leader. And, and we saw Tyler Reddick do this earlier to Ty Gibbs when he was taking the lead uh, earlier from Ty Gibbs. He's just able to cut that cut that car down in the middle of turns one and two and, and go in places and put his car at angles that other guys aren't. And that's that's how he's going to get by Denny Hamlin right here as well. Well, this caution better hurry. 
Here are the leaders. <laughs> Eighth place on the right of your screen, Martin Truex, Chase Elliott. And they are about uh, 7.6 seconds back of Gilliland, who is about to surrender the lead to Tyler Reddick. You noted it, Kevin. That car took off better. Whether they made an adjustment or it just set of tires or whatever, but that Reddick car really took off a lot better on the front side of this run. Yeah, and he he came on a little bit too late in the runs before, so it's probably probably you're probably right in trying to make that car take off a little bit better. 73 of stage two's 125 laps are complete, and Reddick is in front. NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by Credit One Bank and by Toyota. Let's go places. Well, a couple great moments from Phoenix right there. Alan Kowicki's first ever win. Uh, Jeff Gordon, what a great salute to Dale Earnhardt as he tied Earnhardt's win total in the Cup Series. That was the day the Polish victory lap was born right here in Phoenix, and it was pre-planned. Alan said, when I win a race, I want to do something the fans will remember forever. And he did. I always like doing the Polish victory lap because it just, you, I felt like the crowd could see you. You could see the crowd. You, you could can, see them. You could see them. That was, the, that was the biggest thing. And he was proud of his heritage. He named it that. And Allen posthumously was inducted into the Polish American Athletes Hall of Fame wow. in Milwaukee. I feel like Fitting. I learned something every week from you, Mike. <laughs> you know what I like? That era. Yeah. I, those yeah. cars were so cool. Fan base was awesome. Just. Really neat race car drivers. Well, here's your progressive race summary. After 141 laps, four different leaders, five lead changes, 25 cars on the lead lap. And the next of those leaders is likely to be Christopher Bell. He's been the last, the fastest car on the racetrack the last 10 laps or so. Uh, and as things shake out here, once uh, Todd Gilliland makes his stop, uh, Bell will be up there in the top three. And he's closing 
little by little. Well he's going to have some track position now when they make this next pit stop he's going to be up there with the boys that have been controlling this race and I think he's going to be right in that mix. I think right now he's a little bit better than, than Denny Hamlin um, and it seems like he and Tyler Reddick are, are pretty ev evenly matched. It depends on the lap so it'd be great to see him go toe to toe here after we make the next pit stop. William Byron who with Chase Elliott has been the uh, class of the Chevrolet camp here today currently fifth. And let's uh, check in on a driver who's having a bit of a tough day, Jamie. He really is, Mike. We haven't talked about Joey Logano today. He's back there outside the top 20, actually right where he qualified in 23rd. Talked to Joey this morning. He said, I've started on the front row the first three races this year, but this is the place I expected to get the pull, and that was not the case. He said they had to tighten him up, and he just got slow, and that's kind of where he's been today. No major complaints. The car is turning good, but he's back there mired with the rest of them, Mike. First race of the year that Joey Logano has not started on the front row. Yeah, and when you have those days where you just don't really know what you need to do to, to be better, it's just tough to be able to, to figure it out. And you'll have to go back to the shop and, and figure out what did we do wrong uh, fundamentally to, to make the car better. So definitely, definitely interesting that one of Joey's better racetracks to see him struggle. Well, here we go. Got a foot cam of Alex Bowman here. Alex is running 11th. I had to figure out where we were. So now that we've shifted, so we're going into turn one. You see him just progressively let off that brake pedal. And when he gets all the way off the brake pedal, he just squeezes that, that throttle down on the right to try to wait for the car to turn and drive it back off the corner when he feels like that the the tires are gripped up a little quicker release of the brake down here in turns one and two. You want to you can put that throttle down a lot harder right there as you're driving up the banking towards the start finish line. Up to fifth gear. You want to have that big spike in the brake pressure right as you come down into the corner and you want to release the release the brake pressure slowly to help the front tires turn. Staying right down on that yellow line on the bottom. Pretty good hot rod right there. He seems pretty smooth with his steering wheel. Tells me he's got a pretty good grip level in that car. Yeah, it's it's you know I think that I think the car is I mean he's got a decent car, but I think that the things that the guys do up front they can just move around the racetrack better and just being locked to the bottom um, is not what the guys are doing up front. Jamie. One of the best looking pace teams out there, Mike. Best Friends Animal Sanctuary. They save thousands of animals across the country year round. They've got dog prints all over it. But as far as how it's handling, it's pretty good. He's been methodical here. Started 25th. They made some good adjustments and working his way forward at what he calls his home track. Regan? Brad Keselowski in the sixth car having a very nice day. Started 18th, has worked his way up to the ninth position. One of the drivers that's a veteran and loves getting extra practice gave him an opportunity to really try and work on dialing in that six car yesterday during the or on Friday during the practice session. Right now the report from Brad just a little bit too tight across the center. Because of the new short track package NASCAR instead of having 20 minutes of practice for each car on Saturday before qualifying they opened the track on Friday for one long 50 minute practice session uh, for all drivers seems to have paid off. 151 complete very close to halfway with Tyler Reddick out in front of Denny Hamlin by 1.1 seconds.
So much fun being had in the infield of these racetracks. You've been seeing me cover the Tailgate Kings, buddy. This is the king this weekend. Panama's Pub, Uncle, uh, Uncle Phil and his wife's name, Panama. That's her pub. These guys, here they are right here in the back stretch. That's his, he's rented pretty much all of this, but uh, that guy right there, Uncle Phil, he is the guy that you need to know. Fun being had right there. The camper area is huge here, and uh, they open it up on Monday. Folks are here. They don't have to leave until tomorrow evening, so it's a whole week of partying. You see, he called his shot. Well, he knew what he had. Seventh place. Brian Blaney, Chase Elliott. Ahead of them, Todd Gilliland, who is still out there, hasn't made his green flag stop yet, holding on to sixth place. This is seventh. Well, and as we normally see every week, we see that 12 car start to come to the front of the race, in front of the pack as the race goes on. And that's what he, that's what Ryan wanted to see right there. He wanted to see Todd Gill and go to the bottom of the racetrack yeah, so that he you. didn't have to follow him through the corner <laughs> because the, the corner before that Chase Elliott had to follow him. Had the clear lane and, and Ryan had to follow. So you now he's Gill is a pick. That's a move Blaney up to sixth place. Now among the top three Reddick has a one second lead. Christopher Bell should catch the leaders right just before the end of this stage. The way the lap times are running right now. Uh, we've got some audio from Denny Hamlin. The only one that can be coming at time. When he does, he's out in the speed of you through one and two and running the bottom doing it. He's loose, so it allows him to get off the brake really quick and back to the gas really quick. His tip in is smoother than that. Sooner, but smoother. Well, that's interesting information, and 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 especially since these guys are on the same team they want to have the information and to know where they're getting beat and up on the pit box everybody has everybody has um, SMT data so they can look at every car on the racetrack to how those drivers are driving what their lap times are steering throttle brake uh, uh, RPM speed everything that they can give their driver to be able to say okay where are we getting beaten and here's where we're getting beaten this is why so that's good information to have it'll help Denny try to decide what he where he wants to be on the racetrack and what to think about before the next pit stop that's what I wanted you to say it puts it in the back of his mind maybe I can't do that right now but let me tell you something if you need me to do that I need this adjustment right here you make it a little bit better right here and I've got that I can't do it now tell me what you need so you can Contact coming out of turn four between Brad Keselowski and Noah Gregson as they fight for position. Here's a look. A little persuasion there. Yeah, and I think that Noah was was trying to go underneath the car that was above him. We see Todd Gillen on pit road. So Todd oh, no. Gillen finally makes his green flag pit stop. That'll take him out of the top ten. That was a long run for him. Yeah, and I think the strategy on that was what we talked about, just hoping for that caution. I, I think that was the, the strategy was hope um, and, and hoping that, that that caution would fall before the, they had to pit. So that so, didn't work out. But Larry, did he stop late enough to be able to flip the stage now? Get no, that because is. Mike, we, we, we still got about 20 laps left in this in this stage, so he's going to be out of tires even at the end of this stage. So it okay. was a good gamble. I give credit to Ryan Burgundy, the crew chief. You know, if you follow the leaders, you'll follow the leaders all day. <laughs> they tried to do something a little bit different. Good point. Here's Christopher Bell coming into the picture, starting to fill up the mirror of Denny Hamlin in second place. Look at how that gap has come down over just the last three laps. And at this point, of the, at this point of the run, this is when the cars just start to get ill. The, the brakes are hot, the front tires are hot, the back sliding around, and you're just you're trying to just ease the throttle and the brake and really be gentle to to everything, all the inputs that you're that you're giving into the car. So it's it's uh, the cars become extremely hard to drive at this point during the run, and and you have to be able to move around the racetrack. But Christopher Bell's car is just fast. 19 to go in stage two. We're going to take you Fox side by side so you won't miss a minute.
Next Sunday on Fox, Bristol, Tennessee, concrete back on the hard surface. Pre-race, 3 Eastern, the engines fire at 3.30 next Sunday on Fox. I feel like this was a mean, evil trick. Like we had dirt racing and I retired. They took the dirt off the track at Bristol, put us back on the oval, at, put them back on the oval at Indianapolis. That's dirty. You you ready to see that Bristol back on that, that concrete? I, I love Bristol. There's Me not much too. better than Bristol. Nope. And this is something that you don't see very often. Joey Logano about to go lap down, fighting for his life to stay in front of Tyler Reddick. Well, he'll have to do it for 12 more laps to the end of the stage. And that's going to be a tall order because look who's in the picture. Christopher Bell looking for the lead. He's come a long ways in this run. Very impressive with this Christopher Bell. Fast race car. They've got it figured out, don't they? Found him the adjustments he needed. Way she went. And he's doing that on the bottom of the racetrack, which all these guys are up the racetrack. And I think once they see that he's doing that on the bottom of the racetrack, I think they're going to have to work on their cars a little bit because R R Christopher Bell has his right sides on that yellow line, splits the line, and just drives through the center of the corner with a ton more speed than Tyler Reddick had. It's exactly what Logano wanted to see. Why those guys racing door to door? Let me try to get away from him. Stay on this lead lap. He's going to have his elbows up and that car as wide as possible. Well, Joey Logano, Logano does not want them to go by. He wants no. to do everything he can do to, to stay on this lead lap because we only have 10 to go in the stage. And Joey Logano is a tough pass when he wants to be. And that's exactly what Bell's wanting. Hold him up. Probably not wanting to see Reddick get side by side with him, though. And the next car up is Ryan Priest, and he's not that far away. So Logano could lose the free pass position here before the end of the stage. Yeah, and Logano just just gave up uh, once he once he got in that top lane he was like I'm I'm defeated here. Well you get to see it we were riding along with him and you could hear it I mean how hard it was for him to get that car rotated if the car was extremely tight he waited on a way longer than you saw Reddick was already in the throttle turning and rotated and he was still waiting on him. Yeah, and you see Bell's car take off right there as as uh, Tyler Reddick's car comes up the racetrack and kind of cross paths there with the with the air on the front of that car and just kind of lost the nose. He can't just let him by to your point. He's got now he's holding up this lucky dog situation. We got to got to go. So the lucky dog is is going to be between the 22 of, of Joey Logano and the car in front of Tyler Reddick with with Ryan Priest. So that's that's what we're talking about with fighting to keep yourself on the lead lap. That's why Joey has to race so hard. That's exactly right. Battle for 14th on the right of your screen. Larson Gibbs and Chastain as we close in on the end of stage two. On the right you see Ty Gibbs going underneath the one car of Ross Chastain. Ty had some trouble on a pit stop. I feel like his car is as good as the the other Toyota cars up front that are racing for the lead. And they just kind of took put themselves back a little bit. Six to go in the stage. We've only had one caution for cause today other than the stage break and it was the Derek Krause spin on lap six that took Austin Sindrick out of the race and put Austin Dillon multiple laps down. Sixteenth place here. Well there's a guy that we thought would run better Clint uh, Bubba Wallace we thought we thought he would run. Uh, fairly decent today and he has just not shown what we thought he had as far as speed. Yeah and I bet you they're scratching their head. I know he certainly is in that race car his teammate leading this race. For a little bit. Look at this. Gold right around him on the bottom. Is he going to get him clear. Oh, yes yeah. sir. Crossover coming here comes. He looked to the inside. So Christopher Bell has driven to the lead with just a couple of laps to go in stage two, Jamie. And Mike, it's been a bad couple of weeks for this team, finishing outside the top 30. They desperately need to turn it around, and this is a great place to do it. As you see, this car has just gotten better. He was tight earlier in the race, but they've been adjusting on it with air pressure. And another note, all four of these Gibbs cars came with completely different setups. They said it's the most different they've ever been at a track, just seeing what they had. And clearly, the 20 was best in practice. Qualified a little farther back than expected, but pretty good right now as he's our leader. 
I like what Jamie told us right there. Ben Johnson on that 20 car there pressure. The one, the other one that you point, uh, pointed out, Kevin, 45 Reddick made that maybe possibly made an adjustment. His car took off way better on the front side of that run. Now paying the price a little bit on the back. Can they make an air pressure adjustment to, uh, you know, hold pace on these long runs with Bell? Well, he's got new competition at the at the front of the racetrack. He's not racing the 11 car right now. He's racing that 20. So they're definitely going to have to do something different. Uh, and, and Christopher Bell is good on the whole run all the way through the end. So they might have to rethink and maybe split where they adjust it on the air pressure. And they're all going to be racing Denny Hamlin's number one pit stall. Going to have to deal with him. All right. Ryan Priest is now the first car one lap down. He's in the free pass position with two to go uh, in stage two. Bell, Reddick, Hamlin, Byron five seconds back, then Truex nine seconds back. Joey Logano no longer in the free pass position. Wow. Uh, he'll Reddick be a lap down loose. at stage end. Really loose underneath yep. Pre uh, Priest right there. Final lap of the stage, Michael McDowell ahead. And a lot of traffic right there. McDowell and Zane Smith and Chase Briscoe. McDowell saying go 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 boys go go he's right on me. And Bell can cruise to the stage win his first of 2024. He only had one stage nice job, point this man. season entering today. A playoff point 10 championship points and the stage win for Christopher Bell Joe Gibbs and Toyota. Pit stops coming up at the end of stage two here in Phoenix. Denny Hamlin with that number one pit stall. Let's see if anybody can beat him away from pit road. Stage two ends. Christopher Bell, the stage winner. Brian Priest got the free pass. Get you ready for the Big East tournament coming on Fox and FS1 this week. Madison Square Garden conference crown at stake and it tips off Wednesday on Fox and FS1. Oh boy. Kevin I've heard you in our meetings you talk about this number one stall. 
the advantage of it, but you kind of have some mixed emotions on the distance off of that stall. Yeah, well, I'm of the opinion that the distance from the, the, the end of the first stall to the white line that, that scores everybody, it's, I think it should be the same every week. There's really no reason that the, that the distance from each stall shouldn't be the same. So that would be something that, that I would like to, like to see. Uh, and what we've, what we've got right here is as we, as we see this picture, this white line right here, that's that's the only thing that Denny has to do is is get his nose of his car to that line, and that's that's what scores them out of the pit. So, pit road speed is a yellow line, but that is the, that is the scoring timing line. Yeah, and we see the stats of just how important that first pit stall is, and as you go uh, through qualifying and and you get that first pit stall and and. Uh, William Byron had it last year when when we lost this race last year on a, on a pit stop and strategy and everything that happened. But um, yeah, I'd like to see that that line be consistent from the end of that first pit stall. So it's the same every week. So it's not a one race in advantage, especially since we decided the championship here. Think back to the championship. Kyle Larson having that stall beat him out and won the championship. And that distance should be long enough so that no one pit stall has a huge advantage over any other. All right. Lead lap cars can pit. Jamie. Christopher Bell comes in as the leader. We featured his pit crew earlier today as they go over the wall. Christopher said, I'm good on the long run. Let's leave it alone. No air pressure adjustment here, just four tires. The 19 of Martin Shurex Jr. needs more lateral rear grip. A small adjustment for him. Regan. Well, the normally quiet Tyler Reddick, who hadn't said much to this point today, told his team on this run he's losing rear lateral grip more so now than before. The team reminded him that was the longest run, and it was a green flag cycle. And Denny Hamlin in the 11, the tires fell off for him too much on that long run. He got real free. Not exactly sure what he needed, though, because of how it fell off there. Tyler Reddick with a full head of steam. There it is. And Hamlin with that little squirt out of the number one pit box. Back to the lead. Christopher Bell, first stage win of the season. And it comes here in the Arizona desert.
The Toyotas were strong in practice and qualifying, and they have been so strong today, winning both Stage 1 and Stage 2. They have led all but 14 laps at Phoenix Raceway in this race today. Jamie and Shannon, let's get you caught up. Ty Gibbs started on that front row, and he was out front early, Jamie. Yeah, Shannon led the first 57 laps of the race, took command of the race, looked to be in just great position. But you see right here, uh, um, Later in stage two, he has an issue with the right rear. And we actually saw this out of Christopher Bell. At the end of stage two, this drops Ty Gibbs back all the way almost to 20th position. But one thing we really focused on is that number one pit stall. And Denny Hamlin not only wins the race off pit road at the end of stage one, he's done it again most recently. That number one pit stall has paid huge dividends in this race. Ty Gibbs has yet to recover from that bad pit stop. And Christopher Bell, he won stage two. Passing Tyler Reddick for the lead right here. As I said, it's just been a complete domination by Toyota. But of course, on that last pit stop, we just saw issues for Christopher Bell. Yeah, it looks like the same thing that happened to his teammate Ty Gibbs early in the race. This has dropped him back all the way to 10th. Now, we still have plenty of time left in the race for him to make that back up. But we talk about it gets harder and harder to pass the later in the race you get. We knew pit road was going to be an issue, Mike, and it has. Oh, absolutely. Thanks, Shannon. Jamie? Time to look at the Credit One Bank ones to watch. Clint, who you got your eye on? Christopher Bell, again, we just watched him go from 11th to 1st in that stage. 125 laps it took him. Now he fell back to 10th. We're going to have to do it again, boys. Well, you're going to have to pit again, and I think Denny Hamlin has the biggest advantage on pit road with that first pit stall. So you're going to have to deal with the 11, and hopefully they made some adjustments, adjustments to their car to go a little bit further into the run. So who can take it to the Toyotas? I'm watching William Byron. His team just ripped off a 9.9 second pit stop. He's the highest of the non-Toyotas, the Chevys and Fords. So uh, keep an eye on the Daytona 500 winner. And those are your Credit One Bank ones to watch with 119 laps to go in the Arizona desert. It's Denny Hamlin on the inside of Tyler Reddick for the restart. Byron and Elliott right behind them, then Blaney, and here we fan out for the dogleg. Wow, six wide. Well, it's getting closer to the end of the race, and these guys know it's time to go, and they're taking more chances, and we'll see that as we go throughout the day. <laughs> Man, the rest of the day. They are all over the place, aren't they? Four wide at the line. Back for 13th spot. The guy who's had the most exciting restarts is Ty Gibbs up on the outside. It looked yep. like he passed about six or seven of them on the, on the top side there. Still getting it on the outside. Somewhere I hear Christopher Walken banging a cowbell going, more restarts. And we're going to have one. Try to get a roll in here when you can. Leader start, finish line. Kyle Busch around. Yeah, this has been a bad day for Kyle Busch. It's really been a bad weekend. Really, from the time they unloaded, this this number eight car has, has not performed like he wants it to. We've heard him complaining a lot on the radio and lots of changes on the team, but they've uh, definitely had a struggle to the weekend. He was 25th, one lap down. When this happened, Oh, you see him right there in the middle of the racetrack, just starts to come around on him. Got it caught up, had to correct it. Got up in the car on the outside of him. And, man, it's just a handful of a race car. Almost. Pretty much the same spot that Derek Krause had his, his issues earlier when the car stepped out. Almost got into Kaz Grala there. Single car spin for Kyle Busch. Puts us under caution for the fourth time today.
just took my iPad on. I pulled up Twitter, and your name is trending. Did you did you fall down? Is the, what what have you said? What is happening? And I, I so I had to explain to her what was going on that I That's had fantastic. said lit on on television, and everybody was a little bit caught off guard because it's obviously way out of character for me to say it. So <laughs> I guess we've created a monster. And that would be happy hour Tuesdays and Thursdays. Kevin Harvick's Happy Hour podcast presented by NASCAR on Fox. Uh, you've got the word of the day in, so we're good for today, right? Yeah, it was a phrase this week, so okay. we, we've got that in. My gosh, next week it could be a whole sentence. Who knows? Well, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Jamie. Well, Mike, we documented the slow stop for Christopher Bell and the 20 team. Michael Hicks is the rear changer. We watched it back. Hard to tell exactly where it went wrong. What happened? So uh, the wheel didn't make it over the drive pins, and it was kind of stuck. So I had to stay on the lug nut just to ensure and watch that the back of the wheel made it to the back plate. So just that's what, you know, sometimes you got to you gotta stay there longer to make sure the wheel's tight, and that's what I had to do. Well, I appreciate your time, Mike. We celebrate when they do good, and we appreciate when they talk when something goes sideways and they have a slow stop too. Oh, absolutely, and that took him from the lead to 10th leaving pit road. A lot better than letting that wheel come loose. Well, right? That's a bigger penalty. That's a heads-up veteran move. Michael Hicks has been around this block a long time. That was a good move by him. You could see just how long it took him to get that wheel tight. And I hope the rest of these teams are watching because that is such great insight for everybody at home and for us in the booth to be able to have those pit crew members available to do those interviews is pretty awesome. Yeah, we appreciate it. 112 laps to go. There's our aerial coverage looking at uh, that big grandstand that wraps around turns three four in the start finish line aerial coverage provided by Goodyear which powers every mile and every moment on NASCAR's road to victory Goodyear more driven. The Goodyear blimp not so high above the speedway at one point I thought it was going to join us uh, here at the control tower. Here's Denny Hamlin talking about restarts. Yeah, I was a little tight center there. I try to throttle up, Chris, and I just, I've got nothing to lean on. The bottom, I feel it bottom out a little bit and just don't have the rear grip to fire off. And a lot of times that's just the way, the way that those heights are set and the way that it'll sit on the limiters that NASCAR sets in the, in the shocks. You want to run it as low as possible. And and a lot of times it's, it, what he's talking about could go a number of different ways, but a lot of times it's just on low air pressure that that will happen. All right, Denny Hamlin chooses the inside, Reddick outside, Byron inside. A whole lot of uh, either or there. Now, Kyle Busch brought out that caution flag, only the fourth one all day when he spun coming off turn number two. Here's number eight. Uh, it's back to the restart again. Traffic, I mean, we came out of the pits on new tires the last run in clean air, so just got awful with cars. Tough weekend. Yep. You said it. We've, we've documented it. Hey, everybody has them. Corey LaJoy got the free pass on that caution, so now 24 cars will restart on the lead lap with 110 to go. Two Toyotas up front, Hamlin and Reddick, Chevy Ford second row, Byron and Blaney, Elliott Truex, Gregson Bell, Keslowski Chastain in the top 10. I haven't seen much of Blaney today. There he is in that second row. He made up, what, a dozen spots on, on that very short run? Yes, sir. Here we go. Gregson up the outside, four wide. Well, we heard Denny Hamlin talk about his issues. Whoa. Oh, and in the wall just well, a bit there. It was uh, Chase Elliott got into him a little bit, got loose, really upset his race car. Yeah, and Chase is stuck in the middle. Still oh. loose. Chastain in the outside wall. That may have been hard enough to bend a toe link right there. We saw everybody drop to the bottom to take advantage, but Chastain is not letting off the gas. These guys are going for it. You see Christopher Bell trying to dig himself back out of that hole. Man, they're stacking up back there. Chastain was 10th there. Looks like he's only lost three spots for the moment. Three wide for seventh. 
Kozlowski with the bottom shot. Let's see where he comes back up. Just in front or just alongside Whoa. of Bell and Elliott. And around goes Logano. I get it rolling straight here. And another former champ having a bad day in Phoenix. Logano was in the free pass position. And Derek Krause involved. And Corey LaJoy, who had just gotten the free pass. Crew chief Paul Wolf for Logano. And here's the AMR safety team. Well, it's been a tough day for Joey Logano. They struggled in qualifying and, and wound up putting themselves in the back and going to lap down and. Hearing there may have been some contact with the 42. Let's have a look. Yeah, you see back there. And sure enough, John Hunter Nemechek Whoa. run over him from the back. Around it went right up into the traffic of other cars. Corey LaJoy, nowhere to go, right in his lap. Unfortunate ending. Derek Krause likewise. Barry spins. And Zane Smith hard on the brakes, avoids uh, serious contact as he gets into Logano. Been a frustrating day for Joey Logano. It's going to end even more so. My goodness. I mean, that was a hard hit, but he got a pretty hard shot from Nemechek. He got a he got a hard shot from Nemechek that that started all that. But those are those are massive shots when when you're inside the car. Joey Logano walks to the ambulance for the mandatory trip to the care center. His race is done with 106 laps to go. One hundred four laps to go in the Shriners Children's 500. You see the pit road is open. 
None of the front runners came, but a lot of mid pack and further back drivers have come to pit lane. Well, John Hunter Nemechek got hard into Joey Logano to turn Logano around and out of the race. Here's the 42 radio. My bad, man. I didn't mean to get into the 22. I don't know. He slowed up way early. Step forward. I got you in there. Well, he definitely slowed up more than he did. Yep. Uh, all three drivers out of the race. Uh, LaJoy, Kraus, and Logano. Since Logano was in the free pass position, that means no driver gets back on the lead lap. Uh, still working on Corey LaJoy's car, or excuse me, that's Zane Smith's car. LaJoy, Logano, Kraus reported out. Josh Berry got a little piece of that, and Zane Smith right at the end. That is a slow and noisy ride back to the garage. Yeah, definitely not not the end of the day that you want to see. Fifth caution of the day. Three car accident there. And Tyler Reddick had taken the lead there from Denny Hamlin with Blaney third, Byron fourth, and Truex fifth. The Mahindra tractor cam on board Chase Briscoe today. And there's Chris Busher, the buildsubmarines.com cam on his uh, RFK number 17 in 16th place. Well, the point story coming out of Vegas, uh, pretty interesting. We're paying a lot of attention to points in this early season because we see how much they matter. There are the drivers that gain spots, Drivers who lost spots. One driver from each of that group out of the race. Austin Dillon was in that first wreck today. And Brad Keselowski having a good day that he needs. He's currently in seventh place. Well, and this is behind 16th place. So Austin Dillon is definitely in a bad spot. And, you know, I think at, at some point they're going to have to say, hey, we're in a position where we're going to have to go for wins. You're there. Yeah, you're, by the way. you're there. Uh, Brad Kozlowski, it's kind of like last week. Uh, he didn't have a very good car last week at Las Vegas, wound up with a 13th place finish, made up some points. Um, and if you're not in position to be the car that is fast enough to win the race, you have to pay attention to points. And really, from the beginning of the year, if you don't pay attention to points, uh, you don't because you don't really know if you're going to be one of the faster cars or not. So um, both of those guys are in different spots. Uh, you look at our Fox Race tracker up here in the upper left of the screen, and you see all of those uh, yellow lines right there in stage three. We've had a rash uh, of caution flags. Let's blow it up for you here at the top. We had only one caution for cause back at lap number six, then the stage breaks, and now a bit of yellow fever. Well, it all compresses. They all know it. We can't get any of these passes made on these long green flag stops. We're having trouble in the pits. We're frustrated. Everything's catching up. These restarts, they breed more restarts. And you got to go. No matter what just happened, you have to be aggressive and you have to push and you have to shove and you have to dive to the bottom, go to the middle, try the top. Whatever lane is open, you got to try to go and, and make some spots up on the restart while you can. And if you don't have a lane, make one. Make one. All right, here's some uh, Tyler Reddick radio. A few takers. We are about five, six laps outside of the window to make it to the end of the race. So even if those guys uh, stretch it, they got to stay in fuel. I would imagine any more yellows um, after these restarts, then we'll all come. Reset. Copy that. Yeah, all those guys that just pitted, I've been listening to their radios. They've been on them about saving fuel till we go back racing. So those that just pitted can make it. A little bit of strategy to keep an eye on. Save heck, I want to pass somebody. Well, they're going to right <laughs> here. See Martin Truex up on the outside. He's got a great run down the back straightaway. And that's what happens on these restarts. You have a lane that just opens up and all of a sudden you're passing oh. two, three, four cars, and that's what happened to Martin Truex right there. Late opened up, and he took advantage of it. Now he's racing for the lead. We see a little contact. That 19 car is really taking off well. What a battle for the lead. 
And that's what we talked about earlier, Clint, was just finding a lane that worked for you. And uh, apparently that's that's where his car likes to be in turns one and two for sure. Well, he knows you have to pounce on it. Kevin, you just said these restarts, it's time to go. Blaney right in the middle of that swarm. Ninth place. And there's an oh, we got one around. Denny Hamlin. Single car spin. Nobody gets into him, but yellow fever continues at lap 215. Racing for the lead. Denny Hamlin goes around. All of our action today has been in turns one and two. And this is going to put pretty much everybody right inside that pit window. Wow, that was a pass for the lead. So the other thing that this probably does, guys, is, is those guys that just pitted. Let's Here see we what go. happened. See, Denny Hamlin on the bottom of the racetrack getting into turn one. You see, gets a little bit loose, comes oh, up the racetrack, yeah. had to catch it, getting his door of Reddick, and away it came. Around it came. Wow, did not see that coming. Boy, that could have been big. Brad Keselowski was almost right on him. So if those guys were... As we look at this one more time, those guys that just pitted, if they were close on fuel and, and felt like they were in a position to, to make it to the end, now you're gonna now you're gonna have all these guys up front that have to pit and they're gonna it's gonna flop the field, Clint. 100 percent Well, Kyle Bush's luck finally changed. He is the free pass. Well, he'll put, be back on the lead lap. Here's Ryan Blaney's view. So Larry, I guess you got a decision to make with the, all these caution laps. You're saving fuel. You're going to save all you want, but you want tires or track position. Yeah, I mean, I've been looking at the numbers. All everybody up front pitted with 113 laps to go, but we've run about 15 caution laps since they pitted. It's it's right it's right there on the threshold to be able to make it, but maybe they want those four fresh tires as well. But you're right, a lot of them's going to stay out, including Kyle Larson, who pitted two cautions ago. All those cars that stay are pitted that last time, made it right in their lap. Jamie. Brian Blaney two restarts ago made big gains and then on this last restart he went backwards. You see him here taking tires. That chassis adjustment he needed a little bit more, Regan. 45 and Tyler Reddick. It was a quick decision for crew chief Billy Scott to pit right here. They were inside their window. He's been quiet about the car on the radio as of lately. He likes where it's at. And the 24 of William Byron, too tight, firing off, struggling to get that car to go early on in runs. Brad Keselowski may have got two tires. He was not in the pits very long uh, as he comes out with a bunch of them off pit road. Hold station there. Gibbs up five, Wallace up two, Suarez up seven, and, and Larson. And Hamlin rejoins the fray. Denny Hamlin racing for the lead. Spins in Phoenix.
Getting ready for the restart, Martin Truex Jr. is the race leader. He's not been in the pits since lap 190. Ryan Priest also stayed out. He was in the pits at lap 199. The next seven cars pitted at lap 209, and from 10th on back, just came in. Jamie? Well, James Small, the crew chief, Martin Truex Jr., back and forth and said, what do you want to do? Truex didn't want to give up track position. He said, well, we could stay out and bank on another caution, and that's what they did. All right, let's see. Green flag. Truex with Gilliland in tow. Tyler Reddick back at 16th and Christopher Bell back at 19th after pit stops. Bell way on the bottom gains no ground there. Yeah, and those guys that that got flipped that had the pit right there. They're going to have to have some super aggressive restarts and make up some ground really quick in order to, to make up the ground that they need by the end of the race. Denny Hamlin restarted 23rd. He's gained three spots. Oh. Wide in contact. And into the fence goes Eric Jones. Still green here. The bubble walls got loose. Had to run it up the racetrack, got into the side of Eric Jones, running right on the wall. Jones was eighth. He's now 24th. The fight is on, Kevin. Well, Tyler Reddick's done a pretty good job of putting himself in position. He, he had some really, he had a good couple laps right there, made up a whole bunch of ground. He's already 12th. Truex and Priest have gotten away from the field. Gibbs, Chastain under fire from Gilliland and McDowell. Ty Gibbs was 10th at the restart. He took two tires and he's up to third. Yeah, the tires matter here. And we haven't seen anybody really do two tires today, but Ty Gibbs obviously got to the front of the guys that pitted, got the fuel that he needed in the car, and, and Having those cooler, fresher tires definitely makes a difference on these restarts until it starts to even out. Well, lost some of that track position. How do you get it back? You need an opportunity. That opportunity came with stage, or excuse me, with those cautions. Flip flopped them. Away we go. Here's our track position back. Reddick and Bell are now together on the racetrack, 12th and 13th. Trying to fight their way back to the front. I still like Truex's decision to stay out, keep that track position. Keep the fenders on his thing. Let him come get us. Let's not beat ourselves. The only flip, flip side to that is it doesn't make more gas. And if this thing runs green, it, have, we have, it has a tendency to run green. And if it doesn't go green, he's going to have to figure out how to save some gas at some point. All right, we listened to it on Denny Hamlin and company. Everyone should be able to make it. It'll be tight, but everyone should be able to make it, and we're going to learn how to pass some cars in Phoenix. Do not be frustrated. We've had a great weekend. Let's rebound and have a good finish here. Good coaching. Chris Gabehart coaching up his driver. You know he's frustrated. You know he's bummed out. Keep the eye on the ball. Hamlin plus seven spots since the restart as he gets by Ricky Stenhouse. And Denny Hamlin's in the, in the seat right now. He's frustrated, knows that, that he... Made a mistake right there and, and did everything that they needed to do all weekend. And now he needs to, he's going to drive extra hard to try to put themselves back in a position to, to have a decent day. Reddick got right up behind Daniel Suarez, who took the air off his nose, and that thwarted the progress of the 45. So Reddick fired here at 14th with Larson and Hamlin closing on him. The, the guy who didn't get held up was Christopher Bell. He went by Tyler Reddick. So. Tyler Reddick is not making the ground up that I thought he would and what I think he needs. It's a whole different ball game back there when you have to race in the middle of this pack and your car acts different, it moves around funny, uh, and you have it just takes time to, to get back through the pack when you have a fast car. And when they're all bunched together like that, everybody has a shot because you're just looking for a lane that is open. And, and if your lane is not open, it doesn't matter how good your car is handling. It's going to have some handling issues. Well, that's a good point, Kevin. You work so hard all race long. You get that clean air and the old hot rods handling like this, you're adjusting on it to handle those clean air uh, conditions. Now you get mired back here in traffic, the thing is completely different. 
Christopher Bell, if he can complete this pass on Noah Gregson, he'll be up 10 positions since the restart. And into the top 10. But Gregson is not going away. Yeah, Christopher Bell kind of gave him a little door slap right there. So I'm not happy with that, bud. Now, of the drivers that came in at lap 217, Ty Gibbs is third, Brad Keselowski seventh with two tires. Christopher Bell is the first of the cars that took four tires at 10th place. Bell trying to complete that pass on Noah Gregson who just will not go away. Wow. What a race he's having. What a start to the season Gregson is having. And Bell finally gets that done. Well and Gregson comes right back. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to be frustrated with that. Hey, it's a fast car. Gregson's teammate Briscoe just ahead. Ninth place. That's the this is the crazy part about NASCAR racing. You just never know when these strategies and right now we're looking at a 10 lap difference of just one pit decision to say OK let's just stay out and wait for the next caution. And that that bit half the field almost. Well look at Reddick. I mean everything's easy peasy. What can take us out of this thing? Where is this left hook coming from? Boom, two cautions in a row, flip flop the field. Oh my gosh, what has happened? And when you're at the back of the pack or in the middle of the pack, it's no problem to make those strategy calls. You just want to do what the leader is not doing. It's, it's harder to be the leader than it is anything else because everybody in the, middle pack, in the middle of the pack is just going to do the opposite of what you do. So when you get in those strategy call situations, it's like, ah, all right, well, let's pit. They didn't pit. And then the next thing you know, it flips your way. There's the fight for 14th. Blaney, Larson, and Hamlin. Meanwhile, Ty Gibbs is catching Ryan Priest for second place. Here's that battle. Priest, this has been the long run. We got to make the long run better here. We've been mad after 20, so you got to work on that for me. You're going to get catch the leaders. That's not a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how about Martin Truex the decision to stay out at lap 217 when most of the leaders pitted. Could that be a winning strategy. It just feels like it's knocking the pass back. You know, the pedal's so long when it gets to the corner. Yeah, copy here. Still maintaining your gap here. Probably hopefully just a little pad build up for those refires. Well that's a couple things the, the pad build up and as those pads um, get the buildup on the rotors, they start to vibrate, and then it knocks the pads back. And so what, what he's talking about is when he goes to push on the pedal, it goes further than what he's used to it, and he has to push the pedal down further to make the, make the brake pads engage. So a uh, pretty typical problem here at, at, um, at Phoenix. Usually it becomes when you're out front like this, you're using less brakes. Doesn't get that temperature in him. Here's the Kubota cam on board Ross Chastain, fourth. Uh, Ross trying to make some inroads on Ty Gibbs up there close to Ryan Priest in third. He's about 1.3 seconds back. A lot of racing left to go in the Arizona desert. 75 laps. Martin Truex did not pit. He's in front of Ryan Priest by two seconds.
quite a battle shaping up with 69 to go. You're watching Ryan Priest to the outside of Ty Gibbs. This is the race for second place, three seconds behind leader Martin Truex Jr. Gibbs got alongside, couldn't complete the pass on that Ford. Yeah, Martin Truex Jr. has just checked out. And these two, these two guys have been going at it for second place. Jamie, how about the fuel situation for our leader? So, Mike, I just checked in with the team. This is what they told me. We are not concerned about fuel right now. We are concerned about our tires and being at a disadvantage to those behind us. They said we will have to pit for tires before we have to pit for fuel. Wow. Toyota got its first pole of the season today and first two stage wins of the season today. Laps led only 74 total in the first three races and they have dominated here in the Arizona desert. Well we knew that the Toyotas were fast and all weekend really they fired off the truck and, and qualified good and practiced good and did everything good. Look at the left rear tire on that Ryan Priest car. Yeah very low air pressure It's almost wrinkled up getting under looked like a drag tire the corner under braking you can see the torque in that tire sidewall. And that tire has uh, now been on there for 47 laps. So it's not like it's waiting to build air pressure. Second place to Gibbs, who started this race from the front row and led 57 laps in the early going. Regan? Like the 41 or Ryan Priest having a nice run right now up there in third place. They've been fighting that car all day long, tight with the nose. Finally started making gains on it during stage two. He felt good about it, good enough that they could try a little strategy play here. But I just checked with crew chief Chad Johnson. He gave me a hand signal of five that they are five laps short. Oh, no. Yeah, and I think I, I honestly think that that's where the 19 is, too. I, I think it's I think he might have an advantage to be able to go out there and here we get a good good shot of the left rear tire. Wow. You want to run the tires as low as you can get them. You see it on the bottom but you can see that sidewall wrinkled up all the way up the wheel. Great shot. So the cars that are in jeopardy there are just two of them really Truex who pitted at lap 190 and Priest who pitted at 199. Everyone else has been to pit road either 10 laps or 18 laps after that. Ross Chastain fourth. Trying to gain a little ground here. So the leader for 19, he cannot make it on fuel. 41 is close, but it's a stretch. The 54 in front of you is on the, probably can make it on gas, but he goes on a long run. You and the 17 can make it. If you're struggling with loose, you could try leaving it fifth. That'd help us on gas too. Larry, I'm hearing a lot of probabilities. What do you think about the fuel situation? Well, I want to follow up on Jamie Little's report on Martin Trex Jr. and what James Small told her. Yeah, I think on fuel, it's close, but the longest he's run on a set of tires is 47 laps. That's when we went back racing. We made those green flag pit stops in stage two. They're asking this car to do double that on tires. Evidently, James Small saw something in those tires earlier that says, I can't double the laps on these tires. Uh huh. The only one that we've seen go long was David uh, Todd Gilliland in the 38 car. He definitely stayed way out and actually it ran worked the whole for run. Him. Yeah. yeah. Christopher Bell passed Chris Busher. That is fifth place. Bell restarted 20th. Uh, Busher restarted fourth. Jamie now sixth. Yeah, Chris Busher having a really good day after that disaster last week at Las Vegas. They lost that wheel. They kept the team here. They are appealing the penalty, but they've been just working in the right direction. It's part of the test here last year at the end of the season. They found some things, but they really didn't see a whole lot of differences with this new rules package. And he's having a great run, just like he did in November, Mike. Here's Ross Chastain against Ryan Priest for third place. Both of those RFK cars in the top 10. Good run for them. Needed a turnaround, especially with Keselowski. Bell drops to the bottom. Trying to gain fourth place here and does. 
Christopher Bell's car is so strong. I know they've had trouble on pit road, but he, his car is, is so strong. Um, you know, he's gonna he's gonna get by, obviously just got by Ryan Priest. He's gonna get by Ross Chastain here. And we hear everybody, we heard the radio transmission talking about the 54 car falling off. And uh, that if that's the case on two tires, it's probably gonna fall off quicker. I agree with you. If anybody can run down Truex, your leader, it's Christopher Bell. You see picking off another one, Ross Chastain easily rolled right around him on the outside. I'm watching his entrance speed, Kevin, and he just rolls in and to the center so much faster than everybody else, in particular in the turn three right here. He has gained 17 positions since the restart. Those Gibbs cars for a number of years have just been really good under braking um, at the short tracks and especially here at Phoenix. And, and we talked about it earlier in the race of, of the difference in the brake pads. They were really some of the first ones to figure out all the, the braking and, and spend a lot of time on, on time on brake pads and master cylinders and getting that brake package right. And they have uh, dialed that in with geometry on the old car. And with this car, they, they seem to be able to do the same thing in the corners really strong. Those Fords right now running fifth through tenth. Well, there you have it. Truex 06, Gibbs a 23, and him a 2887. Christopher Bell flying out here. But well, we see 56 laps to go, and, and I know that doesn't seem like a long time, but it, it is a in the car, it feels like forever here because the of the the one mile distance and, and all that you're doing in the car and the way that the car falls off and slides around. It's a it's a it's a heavy workload for the drivers. Another 10th knocked out of the lead for Christopher Bell. Yeah, he's definitely Christopher Bell is definitely going to get to to Ty Gibbs. No problem. On board with Austin Dillon. Martin Truex goes by. Christopher Bell coming to Ty Gibbs. This is for second place, and it's all happening about five seconds behind the leader. The one advantage that Martin Truex will have being as we see. On There's board the, with uh, Eric Jones's Toyota camera. It's Martin Truex goes by to lap him. He had some trouble getting getting put up in the wall on, on one of the restarts and just hasn't hasn't recovered. We they had a great weekend. Uh, bad moment for him, but Eric Jones and, and those guys had a lot of speed this weekend. 53 to go. Martin Truex. Five seconds up on Gibbs and Bell. Can he hold the lead to the finish? Let's go box side by side.
They've been flying over and around Phoenix Raceway today. 47 laps to go. Martin Truex Jr. holds a 4.6 second lead over Christopher Bell, who has been a tenth of a second faster a lap than Truex. He was 5.1 back when he got to second place. Now he's 4.4 back. And if he continues on this pace, they'll be right together at the finish. However, as Larry Mack has pointed out, tires are the question for the race leader. Can he go the distance on what he has? You saw tires there atop the pit wall and at the ready as Christopher Bell continues to close and Ty Gibbs holds on to third. Yeah, you're racing the 20 now straight up. The 20 on you. So you both can make it. So you're racing for the win here. The w and goes green. Well, there it is. That's a teammate of Trex Jr. saying he cannot make it. You saw the tires ready on the wall. I think James Small may have been may have been fibbing a little bit there, Kevin. He can't lie to us. <laughs> the only other car that stayed out on both the two most recent cautions, Ryan Priest, is currently seventh, holding his own. He was last uh, on pit road lap 199. Tires are ready if you need them. The thing that I have liked about Martin's car this run, obviously Christopher Bell has been the fastest car and has had the fastest car, but the thing about Martin's car is he's he's run some really good lap times. Let's hear what Martin has to say. How are we doing again? Some other wins of his. If they were to go all the way through, cycle through, probably around P5 or so. Only thing even close pace wise here right now is still Christopher and he's still got five seconds. Yeah, and that's the that's the thing I was talking about is how impressive that to stay out on those. I know they weren't a lot of laps on the tires, but they still had the new knocked off of them. And, and to be able to run like he has tells you how fast his car is. Well, also those tires had uh, two more heat cycles that's on right. them than the drivers who just stopped. Uh, two more restarts, build up to temperature, tires cool back down under caution. So they're not going to be as good as the drivers that stopped at lap 217, whether they took on two tires or four. 12th place, Blaney and Gregson. Let's keep a close eye on Truex here. 41 laps to go. Jamie. Martin Truex Jr., you see him there. He gives up the lead like 55 laps. They just couldn't make it any farther on these older tires. His pit crew is ready. It'll be four tires and enough fuel get them through this stop if they can hit their marks and salvage some positions at this point Mike looked a little slow on the right rear well it won't matter with everybody else staying out damage is done just didn't work out for him and Christopher Bell now leads Ty Gibbs by 2.2 seconds Ross Chastain by four did a good job getting up through that traffic on a restart Right, Kevin. I mean, Christopher Bell. We 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 documented Reddick. We knew he was going to be one too, and he just got stuck back there, mired in traffic. Probably built a lot of temperature in his tires and brake temperature and everything else, and just kind of stuck right there in that. Uh, I mean, you could see he just moved up one more spot in eighth, but that tenth place land never really prevailed. Busher and Chastain. This is for third, four and a half seconds off the lead. Thirty eight laps to go in Phoenix aerial coverage provided by Goodyear powering the race from green to checkered flag and every mile in between Goodyear more driven. Twenty two cars on the lead lap Truex went a lap down with that pit stop uh, Eric Jones has just been to pit road and Ryan Priest has also stopped what should be the final time today and he'll go a lap down. So Christopher Bell with a three second lead. Let's go under the helmet with Christopher. 
I'm from Norman, Oklahoma. The first race I won, I was six years old, driving a micro sprint at I-44 Speedway in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. My favorite win of my NASCAR career would be the 2022 Charlotte Roval. A racetrack that I really want to win at is Dover. I want to take home miles. Christopher Bell's a great kid. Um, raced a lot, had a lot of, has an extensive dirt background. Very successful on the dirt side. Has been very successful here. And you've taught Clint like he was going to be the leader of, of Joe Gibbs Racing in, in the performance side of things. And he has definitely been the, the leader uh, since they unloaded this weekend. I think uh, his teammates have, have also run really well, but I think we felt like he had the best car as, as he unloaded off the truck. Well, you, you said it. He, he just slowly but surely keeps getting better, keeps fine tuning things. And it, I think, you know, previewing the year, I said, I think this is a breakout year for Christopher Bell. And obviously he's proven that correct. But I think that was an easy, easy pick. Ace Briscoe trying to hold back Tyler Reddick. Uh, that is back at seventh place. Let's check with Regan. Well, Mike, Michael McDowell having a very nice day in sixth place right now. Latest report from the driver, just a little bit too tight through the center of three and four. But how nice would it be for him to finish off this good run right now? This is his home racetrack. He's got a crowd of more than 20 people here, friends, family, all kinds of people here supporting him today right now. Dow grew up in Glendale within sight of the speedway here. Had a road race career, thought for a while, maybe be headed for Indy, and well, NASCAR came calling. So, Larry, if we think Christopher Bell and Ty Gibbs can make it on fuel and tires, Every driver third through seventh has an average running position out of the top 10 and varying strategies among that whole group. Where do they stand? Yeah, Mike, the two I'm watching right now is Chris Buescher in the 17, who's in third, and Ross Chastain in the one car, who's in fourth. They pitted at lap 209. That's 103 laps to go, but they've run nine cautions. Scott Graves, Chris Buescher crew chief, he knows there's six seconds out of the lead right now. He's telling him to be easy on the throttle getting in the corner, easy on the throttle getting off, save a little bit of fuel here as we've got 31 laps to go. Red Keselowski looking at his. I'm really impressed with these RFK cars. You're obviously riding along with Chris Buescher, but you see Keselowski on the inside of Chastain. Big turnaround for him this weekend. Needed a good run. Let's, uh, let's hear from Chris Buescher's team sitting in third. All right, here we go. Team 17. This is test lap on fuel savings here. Early lift into one, early lift into three. Get back to 100% of the strike. All right, back to 100%. We give you updates shortly. Yeah, that'll be fine. We may need four or five laps of that at the end of the race, but that'll get us. Just a little, right? Not much. Well, a lot, a lot of times what you'll do is you'll, you'll go full throttle in the corner like you normally would to gain the corner speed and as soon as you get to the exit you'll actually lift out of the throttle to 75 or 80 percent to be able to just save a little bit of throttle down the straightaway and you won't lose a lot of lap time so a lot of different a lot of different styles and strategies to save fuel but that was what I would use I would just drive it into the corner um, you know 75 80 percent throttle and then try to use normal throttle through the corner a lot of times you'll find you pick up speed too. yeah you, wait a minute I'm going slower. Well, back up. Go slower again because there's a faster lap times. Tell me to save fuel and you're going faster. Which one is it? 28 laps to go, Larry. What are the trends? Well, Mike, we're thinking about who can make it, who not can make it. But the old trend may kick in here because if you look at the last four Phoenix races with the Gen 7 car the last two years, the average of the last caution is lap 290, 22 laps to go, which is about five laps from now. We've had one overtime finish, but this number blew my mind, Mike. Phoenix all time has 10 overtime finishes. That's third only behind Daytona and Talladega, our two super speedways. Wow, didn't expect that. Well, I know all about that stat, Larry. <laughs> Last year, we were absolutely annihilating them here in this spring race at Phoenix, and the caution came out. We went from thinking we were going to win to I don't even know where we finished, not first. 
You got a top five because you kept that top ten streak alive. Well, it was okay, but we didn't win. We needed. We needed. We wanted to win. And that's what you're hoping. But if right now, if you're Christopher Bell, you want to see. You want to. You don't even want to hear that stat. You want to. You don't want to know anything about it. You don't want to think about cautions. You want to be able to run this thing green because you're in a position to just go out there and bang out just some consistent laps and not have to worry about anybody behind you because you've got a good car and you put yourself in position to to be where you are. But if you get on the restarts, you're just vulnerable because everybody has a chance at that particular point. And from a strategy, um, just from everything that can happen going into turn one with with all the restart stuff so you Christopher Bell does not want to see a restart. On board with Alex Bowman and the ally ally camera. Christopher's had a or, um, Alex Bowman has had a kind of a mediocre day. I want to for a moment go back to uh, lap 205 uh, and the Nemechek Logano uh, incident in which uh, John Hunter Nemechek said I didn't mean to hit him he braked early. Here is uh, Joey Logano's comment after leading the, leaving the care center. I didn't saw that. No, I drove in the, well, you got to lift to make the corners, Bob. You know, you, you can't hold it wide open around Phoenix, and maybe he should take a look at and realize he can't do that, too. Uh, he drove straight in the back of me, and he's the man enough to own up to that. So not a happy ending for Joey Logano, who will finish 34th today out of the race at lap 205. John Hunter Nemechek continues, and he is 26th one lap down. Well, and that was definitely one of those situations that just was um, it, it definitely mis, misjudged or whatever happened, but he definitely got into the back of the Joey Logano pretty pretty hard and turned him around. Thanks to Bob Pachris for uh, getting that sound with Logano. Christopher Bell's lead is increasing microscopically, a couple of hundreds uh, every lap here over Ty Gibbs with Chris Buescher. Ross Chastain, Brad Keselowski, all three makes represented in the top five. 21 to go. Well, you just said all three manufacturers, but the one thing, these Toyotas, they came into this race weekend, Kevin. No stage wins, no poles, no wins. They've checked the pole off, Let's check stage wins. Can we get this win done? And seven, by the way, in the last seven races, has never had a duplicate winner. This could be another eighth. Well, Denny Hamlin is going to leave here wondering what might have been. Hamlin spun by himself to bring out the most recent caution at lap 215. He restarted 23rd, last car on the lead lap, and he's now knocking on the door of the top 10. Well, he can leave here knowing that he had one of the fastest cars here today, and you, you heard Chris Gabehart tell him that on the radio to, to try to make that feel better, but it's not going to make him feel any better because he knows <laughs> he has one, one of, hurts worse. He knows he had one of the <laughs> fastest cars here today and, and made a mistake and and it got out from underneath him and he spun around. So and, they, a, good, and they, a good run here for Noah Gregson in that you can't miss it car again. What a paint job. Yeah. Yep. Or wrap job. I guess we say now. Tyler Reddick also seventh now restarted 15th. Car kind of stalled out for about 10 to 15 laps as Reddick tried to work his way back to the front. Just couldn't make a go out of it. Meyer back in their traffic on that restart, and you know Bell got up through him faster than he did. Really stalled out. Chris Buescher carrying the Ford banner in third. Kozlowski, McDowell. Blaney Briscoe Gregson all in the top 10 right now. And that really happened when this race flipped uh, for Chase Briscoe and a lot of these Fords they were they were backside of the top 10 or outside of the top 10 and they pitted were able to stay out on that strategy and, and turn their whole whole race around. But that's that's part of it. That's that's what happens sometimes. That caution couldn't have come out at a worse spot. I mean you think about Hendrick Motorsports you look at you look at Byron you look at Elliott that was running up front the whole time. Yeah, Larson in 13th. The rest of the Hendrick cars 18th through 20th. Not a, not a great day for Chevrolet, but it's their first not so great day of the season. They've won the first three races 
Right now they have only Ross Chastain in the top 10. Here's a look at their hot start to the season. Winning two of the first three, including the Daytona 500. And leading the league in stages and laps led coming in here. I feel like without that strategy of flip flopping, though, they were still going to go home with probably two cars inside that top five. Both William Byron and Chase Elliott stiff around the, the top five all day long. But it didn't, right? It didn't. No, and the only Chevrolet up there right now is Ross Chastain. The benefactors were definitely Keselowski and company. He has done a great job. Now watch the 71 here, Zane Smith. He's going to be quick here because he just pitted for fresh tires uh, just six laps ago. That's why he has speed on Chastain, who is the fourth place car. Uh, Zane Smith is three laps down. That caution was just what the doctor ordered for RFK, both of them, Keselowski and Busher in those Mustangs. Big weekend turnaround for them. Third and fifth right now. Racing with Ryan Priest, who is one down. He came and got tires at lap 274. Well, here we go. This is for position right here as we see Brad Keselowski dive under Ross Chastain, but the right side's on that yellow line. Slide right in front of right in front of Ross. Now that was a slide job. That was a good old-fashioned slide job. I think it's going to pay off for him. And actually, Priest helped him there. Chastain let him go. Yeah, Priest has fresher tires than they do, so. He may be able to get away from them here. We'll see. Yeah, Brad's Brad's come on pretty good here at, at the end of this run compared to Ross and able to pick up one more spot here at the end of this thing. Second place is heated up. Chris Busher. Well, we heard the radio transmission earlier talking about how Ty Gibbs's car fell off and it has definitely fallen off. Um, it's fallen off a fairly a fair amount here as we've gotten towards the end of this run and Chris Busher's car has a lot, a lot like Brad's just kept going. Last lap Busher four tenths of a second faster than Gibbs and he takes second place. Coach Gibbs looking on. His grandson in third place here. And one of his four cars on point with 10 to go. OK, Kevin, you got a huge lead like this for Christopher Bell. Now it's inside 10 to go with 20, 30 laps to go. You're not really thinking about it. now. You're like, all right, no caution, yes. no caution. Come on, guys. Yeah, and right now for, for Christopher Bell, he just wants to hit his marks and keep keep the car up on the racetrack. No reason to, to cut the apron or take any chances with those tires. Just keep the car doing what you've been doing the last several laps. Stay in your rhythm and don't take any chances. You've got a huge lead. And Bell still one of the fastest two or three cars on the racetrack. His wife looking on. Last year in November, Bell came here to win a championship, but he lost a brake rotor on lap 109 that put him into the wall and out of it. No such misfortune today. He has led 42 laps so far with eight to go. And it hasn't come easy. He's nope. had some adversity as yep. well, yeah. right? They're bounced back several times. Had that uh, wheel issue on the right rear that we documented earlier. Definitely had their fair share of adversity. On board with Chase Briscoe here racing Tyler Reddick. Looks like Reddick's going to get at least one more spot before this one's done. Three Toyotas, five Fords, and Ross Chastain's Chevy in the top ten. As good as that car was on the long run earlier of Tyler Reddick's Clint, you know, we, we saw him switch around and, and take off early that one run with uh, Denny Hamlin and, and take the lead. 
ever since then the, the long run stuff hasn't been what it what it was early in the race. He's been doing some big slide jobs. Here's another one right in front of Briscoe. These guys are going at it. These guys think they're racing on dirt. Well five to go big position there. Yeah we make so much to do about the about, about the points but every spot matters because you just don't know what this will come down to at the end of the season. If these two keep fooling around Noah Gregson's going to be right there on them uh, in that battle for eight. I say fooling around swapping position back and forth only benefits Gregson and Denny Hamlin. That's quite a cluster uh, back there to your point though, place. slowed him down a half a second as a matter of fact. Martin Truex right there now remember he got fresh tires at lap 272 he should blast right on by these guys and up into eighth place. That's pretty impressive. And that shows you how much those tires are worth. I just want to say something about Christopher Bell and, and just his his. I've heard several interviews out of him and his confidence and the way that he speaks and the way that he wants to be the leader and uh, confident in his abilities to go out and do what he's what he's doing. And, and I think the best way to do that is to go out and show everybody um, this has been a this has been a strong weekend for him. We've seen him re really at the fall race as well have a strong weekend and a chance to win the championship and, and had some trouble. But their car was fast that weekend. You're right. Does his talking on the racetrack. Always has. Looking for his seventh career victory. He last won at Homestead Miami. It's a big lap October. right here. He wants to get around here and see that white flag. Come on baby. That's what he's saying inside that car. White flag this time. Good place to ride there. Traffic ahead. White flag. One lap to go sponsored by Credit One Bank. His center corner speed has just been lights out. He was here at the test, put in the time, worked hard, and it's paying off. And his car can go anywhere on the racetrack, which has made him very versatile and be able to get through traffic well. Preparation's key, and those guys certainly have checked that box here this weekend. This will be his fourth consecutive season with a victory in the NASCAR Cup Series. Christopher Bell off the final corner and he wins in Phoenix. Excellent job Adam. White Knight Willie everyone on the 20 car. Thank you guys. Excellent excellent car. The Shriners Children's 500 to Christopher Bell Joe Gibbs Racing and Toyota seventh career win in his 148th race. And they've all come on different racetracks. Wow. Well Christopher has proven to be a very versatile driver. I know uh, he talked about his favorite win being at the Roval and today in Phoenix and see a very happy team right there. Coach Gibbs leads the team prayer. Chris Busher finishes second five and a half seconds back. Busher won two of the last seven short track races in the series including Bristol in September of 22 and we go to Bristol next week. Quite a battle right at the finish Blaney Chastain. Look at this for fifth. He drove it off in there put the pressure on him didn't he. I think Blaney thought he was going to do a slide job say it on the bottom great finish for fifth right there Blaney got him. Blaney by eight one hundredths of a second takes that fifth place. Eleven different drivers have gone to a NASCAR Cup victory lane for Joe Gibbs. Two hundred nine career wins. Their first Toyota's first of the season Chevrolet had won all three coming in here. They have eight wins at Phoenix Raceway six different drivers. Good feeling Clint the best There's nothing better than winning these races nothing better than climbing on top of that race car and seeing that wall of fans.
Here's Regan. Well, Christopher Bell, an absolutely dominant performance at the end of this race, but it didn't come without some adversity. You had to overcome a pit stop, and you came from 20th on that last restart to get up to the front. How does this one feel? Oh, man, this one feels really good, and just uh, a credit to Adam, man. Adam, White Knight, William, my engineers, my crew chief, and all the mechanics on this thing. You don't get cars like that very often, as you know, so uh, just super, super proud proud to be on this 20 car you know this Ream Camry was amazing today and I feel like we have capability of of running races like this this a lot so uh, hopefully this is the first of many this year Christopher Bell wins at Phoenix Chris Buescher we're talking to him what a bounce back from a week ago at Las Vegas you end up second here how good does that feel for you and this whole team Oh, that's huge. Um, we've talked a lot internally. I mean, we've been able to to lead race we at, at any point in all three races leading up to this. And um, we didn't quite get there today, but um, certainly a, a great finish for our build subs, .com Ford Mustang. Uh, really proud of everybody. This is uh, <laughs> this is a good good try. Um, you know, I know we uh, we had a rough go last week, and um, uh, this was this was good to get everybody back together, prove that, that we're in this together, that uh, we're gonna we're gonna win and lose these things as a team. But um, that was almost a win today. Uh, we, we were close in a way, but like we were just talking, I, I couldn't even see the 20s. So uh, you know that was gonna be a that was gonna be a tough one to battle for a win. But really impressed with everybody today. Uh, they did a heck of a job and, and worked hard to get back up where we needed to be there at the end. I was able to uh, save just a just enough fuel to be able to. Go 100% there at the end and um, at least get one more spot and get to second. So really proud with that. Thanks, Chris. Well done. Thank you. Right here, right here, right here. Christopher Bell beats Chris Buescher by five and a half seconds. Toyota versus Ford. Ty Gibbs third. Brad Kozlowski fourth. Ryan Blaney completes the top five. Christopher Bell, the winner in the Arizona desert. You'll hear from the Charlotte studio right after this. copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.